Apple. Yeah, I we do the same. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. Long ass intro. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> intro. Uh, I do my best. So everybody, welcome to the apparently second best podcast in the universe with the author of the best Tinder guide on the internet. Kill your inner loser. Andy, welcome. Thank you that's, very much for doing quite this. A, quite an intro, my friend. I appreciate that. And hey, with your intro that you just wrote, I saw the Book of Pook on there. That that tickled my little willy right there. I haven't read the Book <laughs> of Pook for years, man. Oh my God, it's, I can't believe that's still kicking around. Oh, it is. It is. I started narrating that because the audio version available three years ago was like this robot voice. Mm -hmm. And... I really that can be like sexy it. though. That can be sexy. Wait till we're on the metaverse. Robot. Nah, is gonna... Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Govern me, Zuck. Govern me. <laughs> <laughs> we already haven't been governed enough. You know what? Plug us in. Be done with it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just go straight there. We're moving towards it. Let's get it. Yeah. But like, haven't you gotten to that point where it's like, guys, can you just tell us you want to enslave us? Hmm. Like, can you can you just come? I out mean, with to it? be fair, they do. <laughs> they just use different pretty language. Yeah. You learn nothing, and you'll be happy. What more? That's as obvious as it's ever gonna get. Yeah, uh, I know, right? Like, it's, it call me cynical, but at certain points, every now and then, I see a news article. It's like, can't you just tell us you hate us? It's pretty much obvious. It's pretty much obvious. <laughs> I I did a a YouTube video a while ago, basically saying exactly that. I was like, switch off the news. The news fucking hates you. Like the news literally <laughs> fucking hates you. Like literally, literally, they fucking hate you, and they're telling you to your face, and you're just like <laughs> lapping it up. Oh yeah, tell me more, Daddy. I hate myself too. So, I think we're already pretty much there, brother. Yeah, tell me to eat the bugs. I will own nothing. Yeah. Like oh, my, like houses are more expensive. Well, live in a box, people. Live in a box. Yep. Like, God yep. damn it. Yep. I, I saw this morning. All they're talking about is inflation's at ten percent in my country. It's like yeah. What the fuck do you think was going to be the result of the last numbers. two years? Those are rookie numbers. You need to get those numbers up. Netherlands is kicking your ass. 17.1. No. Yes. Jesus. You guys are going to be the next fucking Zimbabwe. Oh, my God. I hope so. Get it over with. I'm just going to vote, like, for the most authoritarian dictatorial people. It's called the uh, acceleration theory. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, we know we're going to get there. Just get it over with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the conservatives are going to save us. Like, what have conservatives saved in the last 50 years? Like, come on. Yeah, I know. I know. That was like the whole thing in America. Hey, Trump will save us. And it's like, Trump's a slightly yeah. different flavored lolly. And you guys are just, it's it's not any different. Oh, so apparently, like, midterm elections are over. And there was this big thing about the giant red wave. And we're going to take the Senate and the House. And it, it wasn't even a red tickle. Apparently, the like conservatives won. I think they won. Mm -hmm. Republicans won by like only one seat or whatever. It's like this ain't gonna change yet. This ain't gonna no. change yet. So, but like, luckily, there are other things in the world that will make us happy, like tying bitches up in your case, swiping on Tinder a lot. I gotta say, though, I do gotta say, what a even segue. though I'm good, right? I'm practicing on it. It's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, even though like you are being facetious about it, like the best Tinder guide on the internet, you're not off by far. You're not off by far. I've seen like Reddit posted full of Tinder advice or whatever, mm -hmm. and yours was in there. And I gotta say, man, I think it is truly the best one out there, especially because you're so down to earth about it, where it's like, Yep, and no ego whatsoever. Definitely not declaring it the best. That's not my intro on my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, ex except for that part. But the, the guide itself is just so goddamn down to earth where it's like, okay, guys, you can have the best photos in the world. 
You can be the most handsome motherfucker ever to walk the planet beside me, Jack Napier, because you will never be me. Uh-huh. And you True. will have to... Yeah, I know, right? I mean, very. I'm humble about it, but sometimes you just got to put it out there where it's like, yeah, sorry, guys, not going to happen. But keep trying. <laughs> I'm such a dick. But even then, you will have dry spells. Even then, yeah. you just got to put the work. You just got to put the work in. And I love that so much about that guy because most of the guides out there are like, no, 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 no. But this strategy will get you there. This strategy will get you laid. Where it's like, nah, man, you're gonna have feast and famine periods. There are gonna be times where, like, and this was a couple of weeks ago. You had this podcast where um, mm-hmm. you mentioned even in business where it's like you're gonna have three clients in one week and then zero. Yeah, man. Same thing on Tinder. You're gonna doubt your photos. You're gonna doubt your bio. You're gonna doubt your your uh, what do you call it? The opener. That's not it. Just a goddamn period of the year or whatever. Yep. Just fish ain't biting. So, what made you? want to write this and just put it out there for free because there's some goddamn good value in this uh insanity i guess <laughs> i would say that so at, okay so at the time right so here's how it went so for anyone who who doesn't know what we're talking about we're talking about a big tinder guide that i wrote it's 130,000 words and for people who hear that and go like oh that's cool the average novel is about 30,000 words and so when I first started this fucking thing, I didn't intend for it to be that big. I was like, I'm just going to put out a little bit of advice out there for how to take some better pictures. And it kind of just kept growing. And the more I wrote it at some point, you know, I'd handled all the Tinder stuff. And I was like, I really should have an entire long section on here in here about how to improve your looks. So I wrote, <laughs> I wrote like literally an entire self-improvement guide at the start of the Tinder guide. And then I wrote an entire guide on how to take photos. And then I thought, well, you know, people will do that. And I was getting a bunch of questions from people saying, but what do I do on the actual date? So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll write an entire date guide as well. Like what to do on a date. So I write all that. And then I had guys saying, well, what about when we get into the bedroom? So I thought, okay, fine. Fuck it. Here, here you go. Here's the entire <laughs> four playlist. Here's sex. Here's BDSM. Here's like just everything that I could ever say. And then at the end, I was like, you know what? I think I'm still letting people down. What if they don't just want to get laid? What if they want a relationship? Okay, here's the entire fucking like relationship guide at the end of it. Here's how you build yourself up as a man and make women want to keep coming back and all that kind of stuff. And so it swelled and grew way bigger than I wanted it to. And I've had a lot of people that have said like, fuck, man, like, why is this thing so long? <laughs> But hey, I couldn't want... stop, man. I... It's like, you want the answer or not? Read the damn thing. Yeah. I think it was like, like to answer your actual question as to why I wrote it and why I put it out there for free, because I'd had so many people that had helped me and saved me probably years of fucking heartbreak, man. Like the red pill is one of them. Caleb Jones, he used to be called Black Dragon. Good looking loser. Even Mark Manson was great. Um, the Rational Mail helped a fair bit. I could see the book of Pook, um, Chate, I cannot fucking pronounce this, but Chateau, Chateau Hartiste. Yeah. Hartiste, yeah. yes. Uh, Roosh helped a fair bit. Just like a bunch of dudes, man, a bunch of dudes and a bunch of like general self-help as well on top of that. A lot of stoicism, a lot of just general, like no more Mr. Nice Guy and all of that. And yeah, Great some of the book. books. Amazing book, dude. Amazing book. But some of that, or the majority of that was free and... I had a lot of people telling me you should charge for this Tinder guide, but I don't know. I just, I couldn't, it, it felt wrong. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, uh, you have this set of knowledge to you. Mm. It is just normal and yep. you're not losing anything by putting it out there. You're yep. not losing anything. Like it isn't a detriment to my time or well being or whatever, giving you this advice. Now, later on, when it's like gets personal, like I want an hour of your time or whatever, or I want you to review. Sure. Now, sure. that's the part where you can say, yeah, I'm sorry, this is going to charge you. But like with me, mm-hmm. like teaching somebody how to squat in a, what is it, three minute video, I can just put that out there. Now, if you want like the personal reviews of everything, yeah, that's going to take some more personal time. Yeah. And I, it even becomes very like pragmatic and practical, which is why you start charging for your time. Because 
you know that half an hour that I spend right now or an hour I spend right now with one person, I'm only really helping that one person. But if I was to spend that one hour doing a YouTube video, that could potentially help 100 people, 1000 people, who knows how many people. And so at some point, it's basically pragmatic. You're like, I literally cannot give away my time for free, because then I don't have time to do all the other stuff. So that's a separate side issue. But have you found you know, giving away a lot of stuff for free, giving a lot of value essentially is what we're talking about. Have you found that that's come back to you? Has that been sort of your mantra? Like I want to give and I'll get back. Funny you should ask that. I thought about that. When did I think about this? This morning or yesterday, I was thinking about it where uh, like one of core values I try to keep up is that you receive what you put out in the world. And you and our little chat, like before we punch live, some things will show you who you really are. Mm -hmm. And I just figured out that if you are kind to people and if you do have the best interest of others at heart, you will get that back. There is a thing like karma because I've had some dickish people in my life. Oh, and they got it back. I didn't have to do anything but wait. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. There's a, there's a saying that I always live by, which is the universe is a mirror and yes. your internal beliefs and your internal state of mind and your happiness and what you're giving out that just gets reflected right back at you. So if you walk outside and you're an absolute dick to everybody, why would they ever be nice to you? You think about what you do with someone else. If someone's acting like a right prick to you, you you're not going to go out of your way to help them. And so for someone that you absolutely hate, maybe you'll do their bare minimum. Like if they're your boss, You'll begrudgingly do what they say, but you might even sabotage it. You won't do mm. a lot. But then if you think about what you would do for someone you love, like a friend or a family member, mate, you would take a bullet. You would go to the ends of the earth. And so mm -hmm. it makes sense to be giving out that love or to be giving out that value because, hey, it fucking comes back. And at some point, it's not even something that you're doing to get back. The act of giving is the gift. You feel fucking good helping people. That's, that's your reward. And the rest yeah, is like and cherry on the top. That indeed is the crux of it. Like it's unconditionally. Yeah. Yes. And, and <laughs> cause you, you stray into the territory of like, you know, what no more Mr. Nice guy talks about COVID if you're contacts. giving, yeah. If you're giving, expecting something back in return, oh man, you're going to act like a little bitch when you don't get what you want. Cause you have expectations and you're going to be disappointed at some point because oh. not everybody is going to fall over themselves and say, oh my God, thank you so much for this value that you've given for free. And you see this with a lot of YouTubers, right? Where maybe someone in the comments says something like, um, I wish you'd do a video on this concept and you'll see the, the creator will reply to that and go like, or someone else will reply to that and say, this content's for free. You don't have any right to demand what you want, blah, 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 blah. You should just be grateful for the content that I'm giving you for free. It's like well, that person or not everybody is necessarily going to be grateful. And so you want to be doing the content or giving whatever it is that you're giving. Just give that without any expectations, without yeah. expectations that every single person will jerk you off and tell you that you're the most amazing content creator on the entire, because they most won't, you know what I mean? You give, no, exa giving. well, exactly. And you bring up a good point because, uh, like back to the whole Tinder thing where we mentioned, like, you can have the best photos, whatever that mindset of like, is it my photos? Is it my, my bio, the opener or whatever? It's kind of a covert contract as well, where it's like. For who do you really do it? For who do you really do it? Because at a certain point, you just got to realize, hey, look, I've got my profile out there. They're, they are either going to bite or not. Because otherwise, you're going to uh, revert back to your old behavior where it's like, oh, but I worked out. I got a nice shirt. Why don't you want to fuck me? Well, maybe because she's a human being. And they yeah. have a will of their <laughs> own. Now, you could make yourself more attractive by those things, but it's not a guarantee. There is this, you need to have that mindset of outcome independence. Yeah, it's like sure, you, need to sure. do, you need to do it for you is the, the yeah. real crux of this whole red pill thing. I'd like to get your opinion on this. Uh, what do you think of the, um, of the opinion that all the red pill is really about is you figuring out the mental point of origin thing that no matter that no matter what happens, that whole self improvement thing is about you, and yeah, whether sure. you get the yeah. chicks or not, it doesn't matter. 
because you've worked out for you. You've put on moisturizer for you. You've got a haircut for you. You bought yourself nice clothing because you think you're worth it, mm -hmm. not somebody else. Absolutely. Amen. Preach, sister. There's a <laughs> there's a book that's absolutely relevant to this called I Need Your Love. Is that true? It's by Byron Katie. And in this book, she absolutely it, it's like a book. I always say she's like a stoic, but a female version. And she very much sounds like a lot of the red pill, especially in this book. She talks about outcome independence. She she doesn't use that phrase. But the whole point of this book is if you sit there and have expectations of you know romance or sex or intimacy or love or any of that the second you don't get it you don't really like the person that you become because you're not actually and she talks a lot about love and i guess we can just talk about sex it's all really the same thing but mm -hmm. love is an act of giving but most people see an act of taking I'm in love, so you have to look after me, or you have to spend time with me, or you have to give me security, or you have to give me commitment, or you have to give me your time, or you have to give me sex, or you owe me this. And it's very rarely actual love, which is, you know, the the love between a mother and her child. That's usually pure love, because it's like, I love you wholeheartedly. You're never going to appreciate, maybe when you're older, but you're not going to appreciate or be grateful for what I'm giving you. I'm just giving to give. I'm giving because that's what I want to do. Because when I look after you, my child, that makes me feel good. That's love. The same thing with sex and intimacy. And, and to tie it back to your original statement, yeah, I think at the heart of it, the red pill is a self-improvement movement. And the point is to improve yourself, or I believe their point is to improve yourself so that you can look into the mirror in your own eyes and say, I love you and nothing bad happens. You, you like what you see back. That's something that I've given as a test to most of my clients and my audience. I say, can you look in the mirror into your own eyes and say, I love you? The answer is no, you've got some work to do. Mm -hmm. And until you can do that, yeah, I think there's like, work to be done. It, like, it, sound, like, it might sound a bit woo-woo magical for some people, but that is the crux of it. Like, mm. are you taking care of yourself like you yeah. would take care of somebody you love? Like even Peterson mentioned that. He gets a lot of guff. Because uh, for whatever reason, like uh, the, he, he can be a bit emotional every now and then. I'll give them that. But his advice is pretty goddamn solid. And he's helped more people than he harmed, mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. But especially that, like, if your dog is sick, you'd give it, it, you would give him its medicine, right? Apologies, a bit of a <laughs> language barrier there it's sometimes. A it's a tough sentence, tough sentence. <laughs> but... And then you have guys who can't even bring up the discipline to work out just two times a week. Like, mm -hmm. why, why don't you value yourself enough to just do that? It's such a strange phenomenon, but that's... I think... Sorry, you finish. You finish. No, go Sorry. ahead. Go ahead. No, I interrupted. I'm a rude <laughs> bitch. We're just human, man. Like, these, uh, that's kind of what I do with my podcast as well, where there's rarely a topic. It's just because mm -hmm. then it becomes automated. It's like, oh, uh, this topic. Oh, I'll finish this. Now. You're that. really going to have a rough time when the Matrix kicks in and the Metaverse takes us over. Oh, yeah, man. I I, I swear to God, I hope that just the EMP hits or whatever that's called. EMG or EMP. <laughs> EMP like, <laughs> takes it all out. Yeah, like, boom. Done. I mean, it's going to be a bummer for Bitcoin, but, you know, it's, it's a sacrifice i'm willing to make for the reset of the greater good <laughs> back now to you gold sound exactly like them yeah <laughs> the greater good oh yeah man i used to have a lot of trouble with the greater good like why can't you just behave like why do you always have to share your opinion well because you're wrong <laughs> yeah but for the greater good we just say this well fuck the greater good <laughs> i am not eating the bugs damn it where were we Wait, going with this? Uh, we were we were on the topic of the red pill. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That, thank you. Loving yourself, things like that. I did want to ask you, like maybe a bit of a standard question, but like, how did you find all this? Like, when when was the moment where we were like, "Holy shit!" Oh, brother, these bunch of misogynists are right. <laughs> the female. No, I can't. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, you want to know what's fucking funny? So, 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 I, I literally did call myself a feminist, and I had no male friends. I only had female friends through my girlfriend at the time. Um, 
I was like the poster child of like the male feminist kind of. I didn't even really understand what feminist meant. I was just like, yeah, I'm a feminist. I guess I like women. Yeah, of course. Like, and I, I like women. We're equal. It's it's painted as such a like. Anyway, that's a separate thing. So I had basically no fucking male influence in my life, no male friends, and I was super depressed. I was in a really horrible, like really just awful relationship, like abusive, just like not a great relationship, and. I, towards the end of the relationship, I read this article. It's funny that you mentioned misogyny because I read this article by this website that's now shut down called Danger and Play. And in this article, he talked about how women like to be choked during sex. And so me as a feminist reads this article. I wasn't walking around as a feminist, but I had those kind of, you know, ideas in my head. I read this article and I'm like, this is literally misogyny. This is like rape. This guy's like actually fucking just choking women out. Like, what is this? Some like sick fucking twisted. And I, I turned the website off and I was like, that's disgusting. <laughs> and then several weeks later, right? It's the gears are turning in my head. And I'm like, but why would he say that? So I go back, right? Like out of morbid curiosity. And I read another article and he's like, you know, here's how to choke a woman so you don't hurt her. Here's how to pull her hair. And I was like, this is sick. Like, this is just, this guy's a rapist. Like, who, what <laughs> women aren't into this. Like, I get to say what women are into because I'm a, a good feminist and good feminists say what women are into. And I say that they shouldn't be into this. So I read it. I turn it off. I come back several weeks later and he's, I read something about spanking. And so I'm like, I, I have to at least try this. Like I, I, I have to know. <laughs> and so I'm in the middle of sex with my girlfriend. <laughs> and, and now like if, if anyone else is listening, by the way, and you're in the same position, just fucking ask her. All right. But at the time I was like, I can't, I can't mention that I want to try spanking her. So I was like, how do you spank a woman, but pretend that you didn't spank her just in case? Like, how do you have plausible deniability with spanking? Right. And so <laughs> spasm. <laughs> I basically did. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but I'm, so, me, I'm not laughing at you. This is recognizable. I, I was actually at the point where I, I mean, no, please go on. I'll tell you later. Go on. Go on. The spasm. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so I spank, I pretend the plausible deniability. She freaks out. She's like, what the fuck was that? And I was like, oh, I just, my hand just moved. Like, I, you know, I, I didn't do anything. I love you still. And, you know. So I, I think like, okay, I, I just dodged like going to prison. Like this was the moment I was about to go to prison. Like she didn't say anything. It's fine. And so several weeks later, I don't know, just something in my head was like, well, I have to try the choking thing. Right. So I, I just gently rest my hand there and I don't squeeze. I just like have it there. She seems okay with that. And then like, I very gently squeeze and she kind of pulls my hand away. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to jail. Like it, but, but nothing bad happens. And I put it back there and I squeeze again and she doesn't take my hand away this time. And Long story short, we eventually, you know, over the next couple of weeks, I started trying some more stuff. And there was one moment where I think I spanked her or something properly and she moaned. And in that millisecond where she moaned, I was like, oh my fucking God, I've had it all wrong. It was like the whole fucking thing came crumbling down. And from there, I found another website called Good Looking Loser. I found Rollo Tomasi. I found the Red Pill on Reddit. I found just a bunch of other things, bold and determined, just, just everything really. And I kept reading and reading and reading. And the first thing that the red pill always says is go to the gym. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go to the gym. I was so weak. I couldn't do a push up with my knees on the ground. I couldn't do a, a pull up was not even possible. I wasn't even fat. No, that's not true. I was fat, but I had lost all the weight by that point. I think I lost 77 pounds, but I was completely a fucking train wreck in terms of the gym. So I started going to the gym. I started getting my shit together. And then at some point I, I had found this like approach anxiety program over on a website called good looking loser to, you know, get over your fear of hitting on women and just reading that man and like opening my mind up to the possibilities. And at that point I was 28 and I was like two years from a midlife crisis because I really wasn't happy in this relationship. And I, I just saw 30 coming and I was at this crossroad, right? Where I'm in this miserable relationship and I remember sitting in a park one day after I'd had this big fight with my girlfriend and writing this like really long text out to my mother, basically just saying everything like, Hey, you know, I haven't been happy for the last four years. I didn't know how to tell you my girlfriend, you know, is abusive. She's violent. She's, you know, she's got her own shit. I, I don't think she was a bad person, but she had her own shit going on. I wrote all this text out to my mother and I was like, if I hit send on this, this is my red pill. Like, like literally if I hit send on this, I have to swallow the red pill. Like 
I knew all the terminology. I knew everything I was going to do. I was going to go outside and start talking to women and all of that. And I sat there for like hours, man. And then I didn't hit send and I deleted that message. And I was just like, I can't. And fast forward two months later, we had another big fight where she was just, you know, my girlfriend was like, I don't think particularly reasonable in that moment. And I was just like, I'm done. And she I was love like, how decently you put that. Well-mannered, no, like, Go on. Because I think I think she was ultimately she believed a lot of her own stories. I, I give people the benefit of the doubt of that. She had a lot of stories going on in her head. She had had a very bad childhood and often put that on me as the man, because men in her life hadn't been good to her. And so yeah, I don't think she's a good person. I actually ran into her several years later and she was happy and I wished her well and all that. But the point is in that moment, yeah, I was like, I'm fucking done. And she goes, what do you mean I'm done? What do you mean you're not fucking done till I say you're done? And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And something just in her completely changed. And for the next week, we basically both cried. We talked it out. We hashed it out. And then from that point, man, I just dove into the red pill. Like I went full fucking ball into the red pill. I did everything. Over the next like year or two, it was just like a complete metamorphosis. Like I went out and learned to talk to women. I started getting laid. I had... I don't think I had any threesomes until a couple of years later, but, but basically I just went completely into the red pill. I was like, take me red pill. Like, like fucking, I opened my arms up. I was like, I'm in, like, I'm in, I'll do whatever I fucking have to. I, I can't live like this anymore. Yeah, man. It's a miracle. What happens when you actually put in the work and get results when you try, when you give yourself that permission. Cause most people don't man, like, like it's that red pill that we're offered, but we go, we know if we take that red pill, you are literally not taking the blue pill. Like, as now, in, you have to reject that entire alternate life. You you can't untake the red pill. Yes. And have you ever encountered examples of guys who knew everything you knew, but didn't? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. So, so um, I've had a few in my personal life, but probably the best example I can give you is my girlfriend. My girlfriend right now, her name is Emmy, And she, a couple of years ago, she had this, like, guy that she was friends with. And... He was somewhat of a nice guy. And so she gave him no more Mr. Nice Guy. And she said, hey, like, you know, basically you got to fucking take the red pill. You got to get your shit together. Like you got to. And so he at some point took LSD. And for anyone listening who doesn't know what LSD does, the best thing I can say is it opens you up to all possibilities. I think that's the best way of explaining it. It, it just makes you see yourself in a different light. And basically this guy tripped on LSD and he wrote down all of these thoughts that he had had, like a lot of like red pill thoughts, like women don't respect me. I don't respect myself. I don't like who I am when I look in the mirror. I don't think I'm a man. I think I should be more masculine. I, why don't I go to the gym? I'm not happy with my body. Like, like really good red pill shit. And so, you know, he told her that he goes like, you know, I've been reading this book and I tripped on LSD and I had all these thoughts. And she's like, that's amazing. Like you've, that's fucking amazing. And he goes, no. It was terrifying and i think that i was just crazy on drugs and so like i think i was just being crazy and she's like this is your brain this is your fucking soul trying to cry out and tell you that you've been unhappy and miserable and depressed and suicidal for years because of the reasons that you wrote down and yeah he seemed to be able to put the genie back in the bottle i don't know how but that's probably the biggest example i've seen of someone do that i don't know how you'd even do that i don't oh, know how man, you'd that, do that. that is just willful ignorance there's got to be some oh, self-medication after that. You got to be hitting the bottle hard after that. Cause you know, yeah. like you can't just lie and say, Oh, I was on drugs. I was crazy. It's like, nah, you know, no, you know, because you're going to start seeing things. You're going to start seeing things like uh, maybe yeah. a bit of a weird example, but like, um, how do I put this respectfully? <laughs> put it, put it unrespectfully. 30 uh, year old women to be blunt to be very fucking blunt so guys who like uh turn 30 or whatever and out of nowhere they get a girlfriend whatever mm -hmm. and like you know a guy who knows what you know and he starts um kind of talking it right where it's like oh well you know where they're just very happy and blah blah okay did she go to college yeah yeah 30 and still single went to college huh ah. Okay. No, no, but they're very happy together. And uh, you know what? It's like, you know what I know. You know what's going on here. He wasn't her first choice. He just wasn't. Well, you know what, Jack? Maybe maybe you're single because you keep dating those younger girls of 20-something, and they just don't want a relationship. Maybe you should go for older. It's like, 
you know why I don't do it. I know why I don't do it. And it's like, well, but he has a relationship, yeah, now. Yeah, but not for the reasons you think. Not for the reasons you think. But it's just like, well, if I keep believing in that, there will be a chance for me as well. Do you think and it's it, that or do you think it's just like political correctness? They're trying to say what sounds good. No, it's not political correctness. In in this case, I know it's not political correctness because they're quite politically incorrect. But when it comes to that, it's it's that holding on to hope, holding on. To yeah. Hope. Yeah. And I think that's that like one, you know, we can use the term one itis, you know, that so you would like the book that I, I talked about before the Byron Katie book. I need your love. Is that true? She talks about the the myth of like the soulmate and the one. And, you know, if you need someone else to complete you, you she literally says, if you need someone else to complete you, you're insane. Yeah. But I think that's such a meme that is just spread throughout society as in the meme of the soulmate or the one it's in every movie, every TV show, people will say it to each other. If you break up with a girlfriend what what's the first people the first thing people will start saying you'll find someone soon it's like why do i need to find anyone what the fuck yeah. like it'd be nice if i do wouldn't that be cool but like why is that your first thought isn't your first thought like i hope you find some self-love or i hope you find some self-improvement or what are you going to do with all your free time but it's this myth of like the soulmate and that there is one person to complete you because by extension what you're saying there is that you can never be complete by yourself that's a fucked up thing to tell people yeah. You're literally saying if you don't find the one and good luck with that, because that's a fucking lottery, you're basically condemned to misery. So you're literally saying to a bunch of people, you're shit until proven otherwise. What a fucking horrible life philosophy that is. Well, exactly. Like if you don't find your one, apparently nobody likes you enough. Apparently there yep. is no one for you. And there's nothing you can do and you can't be happy by yourself. And yeah, you're just going to be an abject failure and a miserable human. And you should probably just kill yourself. Yeah, well, exactly. And... What was I about to say? Where it's um, the the counter argument for the red pill is often, oh, it's just shallow. Like people should like you for you. Well, I'm sorry to state this, but women prefer men who take care of themselves. Here's the, no, know. here's the way I would say it. Okay, go. Ahead. I somewhat agree with the premise of like it's said it's said with with connotations in a certain context but i actually agree with the premise of like find someone that likes you for you but here's the caveat you got to fucking like you first you cannot be a hypocrite who goes i don't like myself but you should like me it's like no you fucking piece of shit you go first you want someone to like you you fucking like you and if you can't yeah. again if you can't look in the mirror into your own eyes and like what you see there you go that's you got work to do and there's always more you can do like it's it's you're not lost but yeah, people have this idea of like, I'm not complete. I don't like myself. I'm not happy with myself. I'm certainly not proud of myself. And I'm never going to say I love myself, but someone else should fill that void. It's like, you fucking hypocrite. You do it first. Oh, very well put. Very well. Good way of phrasing it. It's exactly like, because at a certain point, oh man, how do you phrase this? Because at a certain point, it indeed is like, love me for me kind of thing. But that me that you can be needs work like you are not allowed to, to say take me for me if you haven't no put you in can't the work. say yes you can't say you can't say love me as a ste as like steaming pile of, i'll phrase this nicely whatever i will phrase nicely. <laughs> a steaming pile of garbage right and like yeah. That isn't a reflect. People take that as an insult. They're like, are you saying I'm not good enough? Are you saying I'm not good enough right now? No, we're not saying that. We're saying, again, here's the litmus test. Do you like yourself? And they'll go, sure, I like myself. Prove it. Go into a bathroom right now. Look in the mirror. Tell yourself you love yourself and see what happens. And if there's not a smile on your face, then I don't believe you. And why should someone else love you? And people are so afraid to take that litmus test. They go, no, that's gay. I don't want to do that. Like, uh, mm. no, I'm not going to say I love myself. And it's like, well, okay. You don't like it. Good luck finding somebody who will tell you then that they love you if you can't even love you. And and this comes from the Byron Katie book. Someone will tell you that they love you. And what are you going to say? You're going to say, I don't believe you. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't love myself. So why should you? Or you'll think, man, this person's fucking dumb. Or you'll think, man, I have to hide the flaws. I have to hide the dark parts of myself. And I can't be honest. And I can't live with integrity. And I can't, and I think that's a very big part of the Red Fool philosophy is sort of living with this integrity and saying, this is who I am. You either like it or you don't. They call that abundance mentality, but really what they're saying is like, I like myself. If you don't, well, that's okay. You don't have to but like that, me. That's the whole mental point of origin thing, right? Like how yeah. will the decisions I make affect me? 
Yes, yes. Is it in line with me? And yeah, afterwards, integrity. it kind of goes to the rest, which is such a misunderstood concept because why don't people just get that the better you take care of yourself, the better you can take care of others if you're willing to do that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like, I'm, I'm all against setting yourself on fire to keep others warm. <laughs> I love that saying, yeah. I got people that from Ryan Stone. Give, people try and give when they have nothing to give, man. Yeah. Give yourself and that's first. not giving. That's a covert contract. You're you're giving you're basically paying a debt and saying, fuck me, I'm gonna take out this loan and give someone something that I don't have to give, whether that's time, attention, affection, whatever. And I fucking hope they pay me back in interest in interest. Otherwise I'm gonna be bitter. Mm -hmm. You're gonna like, feel I'm useless. not happy with Yes, 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 yeah. You feel powerless and without control because again, you're it's such a fool's errand to try and make someone fall in love with you or like you or give you sexual attention or any of that. And that is one thing I love about the red pill is generally speaking, generally speaking, they say, focus on yourself first and then put in some time and effort to get some women. But you got to focus on yourself first. That's like number one priority and should always be number one priority. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to rely on others to give you what you lack yourself. Yeah. I, uh, I know a lot of guys are like, men don't have emotions. Well, unfortunately, we kind of do. And this might sound like a bit of an emotional thing, but it is like it needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. It really needs to be discussed because that's where whynitis comes from. You not being able to rely on yourself for mm -hmm. validation, whatever. And that's when guys go yeah. out looking for that validation. Like the, this is like stoicism. psychiatry 101. How's your relationship with your father? <laughs> yeah, it's stoicism, man. Stoicism is another way of saying, can you handle... It's basically exactly what you said. Stoicism is like, do I have a, a strong compass? Am I a rock? Do I like myself enough that other people's opinion of me doesn't rock me? It doesn't bother me. It doesn't fuck me up. And tied into that means you know, inherently that has to mean I don't need their validation. Maybe I want it because it feels nice. Maybe I like sexual, you know, energy. Maybe I love having sex. Maybe I love all of that, but I can't rely on it. And I can't get disappointed if it's fine to get disappointed, but like, I can't sit there and act as if the world has fallen apart because some woman rejected me, or even if 50 women in a row reject you. I've seen so many guys that just fall apart because a bunch of women, you know, reject them. And it's always because they don't like themselves. When you like yourself, you you have this sort of feeling of, okay, if she rejects me, well, that's okay. If anything, maybe she misses out. But but even then, like I don't know. How does she how do I know if she wants what I want? But it's the missing good. out part is a good one. But what I'm I find that you as a guy need to get to that point where you can say that with conviction, where you're mm -hmm. actually convinced that you know what? I have done all I can to be the best version I can be. I'm bloody fucking happy with myself. If she rejects me, I'm sorry. I thought you had an eye for talent. Go with God. I wish you the best. <laughs> like I can't help you, madam. Goodbye. And that's, and that's a process of like building yourself up. That's why like the number one thing I say to my guys is like, you got to keep busy. You got to, and, and not just like time wasting, but like you have to have your own life going on. You have to have your own mission, your own independence. You know, I've done a couple of videos recently about like actual relationships. I've been with my girlfriend for about five years at this point. So relationships is something that I love to talk about. And How even in a relationship, doing, by the way, I've seen, uh, I've seen a couple of videos of you together. She's fucking fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. She's over there somewhere. <laughs> I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. But like this independence, this 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 idea of independence, and really it's about having a mission that's higher than you. And this absolutely applies to casual relationships, like just sex. But I think it applies to just life in general, man, and definitely main relationships. I always say your number one let me make sure I get it on screen. Your number one mission is is you. Your number one priority is your mission. Like you, your self-improvement, maybe I don't know if you want to change the world, whatever the fuck it is, that's your number one. Number two is something like your family or your friends or something like that. Number three priority is like, I don't know, your hobbies or your things that give you joy. And then number four, sure, women. And even in a relationship, even in a marriage, my parents have both told me that. They've said like, no, I, I have to be number one. My parents have been married for something like 40 years at this point. And it's like, if you ever put the other person as number one, what the fuck do you do when you don't like them? 
The fuck do you do when they're depressed for a little bit? What do you do if they don't behave exactly the way you want? Which guess what? They won't because they're their own person. What do you do when you have expectations or you tell yourself stories of how the day is going to go or, you know, she's going to come over and we're going to have sex and it's going to be amazing. And then she comes over and she's really tired from work and she goes, I'm really sorry. I just, you know, I'm in a weird headspace. I, I don't think I can have sex right now. If she was your number one priority or if getting laid was your number one priority, your whole fucking world falls apart. But if she's number four, you're like, that's okay. Okay, I get it. I have a bad day too sometimes. Do you want to yeah. go grab a beer? Like you don't care because you got three other fucking priorities. Yeah. Way and above weirdly that. enough, then all of a sudden she does want it. Female psychology. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think I okay, I again I think that just ties into Okay, so I I have this thing with, with my girlfriend Immy where I call it a love boner or a res, sorry, a respect boner, which mm -hmm. is where she does something that genuinely makes me respect the living shit out of her. Like she'll overcome some massively difficult thing or she'll achieve some huge fucking goal or she'll open up to me about something that's like really fucking difficult for her to talk about. And I've noticed that in the moments where she achieves greatness, I literally get a fucking erection. And the first couple of times it happened, I was like, this is weird. Like, what am I, a feminist? Like, I'm respecting women so much that I get a boner. But it, like, it happens. It, <laughs> yeah, no. But it happens so consistently, literally every time. It's only when she does something like really, you know, it's not like if she's like, I cleaned the dishes today. I don't get a fucking, you know, charge and chubby. But it's, <laughs> it's when she does something like really fucking impressive, right? Like something that's taken weeks or months. And I think that's just because you have this feeling of like, the other person likes themselves enough to improve. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's just attractive to women, man. Like the red pill says I, that it is. I think it's men as well. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm being a bit of a dick here. I would lean more towards appreciation than respect. But that's more of a language thing and we're splitting hairs there. But it's like you appreciate that so much in that person. Like you went after it. Yeah, fucking did it. I mean, I have an ex who I still... Um, Every now and then, keep a finger on the pulse. Where it's like, mm -hmm. how are you? Like, mm -hmm. because she got kind of fucked over with her job and things like that. And she uh, uh, she did uh, reschooling in coding, things like mm -hmm. that. And like, she wanted me to meet her parents. And I thought her parents were being a kind of a dick. And I was like, no, I don't want that. She was like, well, I mm -hmm. want somebody. I want to continue with somebody who is part of that as well. I'm like, well, go with God. Like, mm -hmm. I love you. I care about you. But th that's just not going to happen. But every now and then, I just want to know, like, did you finish it? Were you, like, and she texted me last night where it's like, you know what? The the guys of the course I'm doing for coding, they are giving me projects. They're very happy with the work I'm giving. They are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they're they're telling others about her. There's a one single word for that. Uh, Bragging? Recommending. They're recommending her to, like, uh companies and blah 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 and i was just so fucking proud of that i'm mm -hmm. like yes you didn't fuck up you went through with it it's like yes just so happy for her i think it's something more than just like appreciation though that doesn't yeah feel, i feel like i feel like it's like okay so you know how you know how we're going to talk about hypergamy here Oh, yes. Mate, Lord I and Savior Roland Tomasi, let's I, go. <laughs> no, I think the same thing applies here. I think it's something like, you know, when your girl does something fucking killer that like most other women out there aren't doing, whether that's like landing an amazing job or whatever it is, I think there's some part of you that's like, man, I'm fucking thin? a really cool woman. Sorry. Like, <laughs> having a normal body weight looking nice <laughs> no i know but like you joke but like statistically speaking that is like epic that's like I the know, big achievement right like, oh but i think there is a part of you that's like hypergamy that's like yeah i'm bagging i'm banging like a badass bitch rather than i'm just banging some like average woman oh this sounds so weird this sounds so weird and i haven't phrased it properly but mm -hmm. what would you find worse her like banging five multi-millionaires or one loser junkie oh <laughs> you know what i'm saying like these these kick at like you're we're gonna know she's not a virgin anymore like we're not idealists here she she's gonna have exes whatever so let's say it's like five no, exes I, or whatever okay. who were killing it or just some you look at him and you're kind of like you fucked that it's like ah I don't know. I think that one. I think that one. If it was like five millionaires, you'd have this feeling of like, good job. Good fucking job.
Was and if guy, it was you'd... the other guy, you'd, you'd have this feeling of like, man, you must have been in a dark place. You must have been believing some crazy low self-esteem stories about yourself. Yeah. And it's not that. like just millionaires because like I have one gripe with the top 1% of the world, like the top 0.1% of the world. It's like, they all look like shit. I don't get that. It's like, Bill no, Gates, dude, it's do like, you know, do you know, I have sat there and thought if I had your money, like, holy fuck, I could spend like $14 million a year on steroids. I could spend like $50 million a year on like nutrition, like the, the 50 of the best nutritionists in the entire world could cook me food. They could just travel around with me permanently, giving me the right amounts of food. They could inject the fucking food right into my fucking exactly. veins. You know what I mean? Like the, I would have like, I would pay a million dollars for the best like sleep people ever to give me the best sleep of all time. The, dressing myself holy fuck so many of these billionaires can't dress themselves and they're like oh but i just want to like save time it's like motherfucker like have someone to dress you while you're sitting there taking a shit there should be someone buttoning your shirt up that you pay like a million dollars a year to go the steve jobs route one outfit every day done <laughs> fixed problem solved get your ass in the gym you're a multi There's just the gym okay the gym i don't understand because it's like bro you could pay someone to like absolutely motivate the shit out of you and if you go like yeah but you know i'm elon musk i don't really want to go to the gym it's like okay well what if that person like literally fucking did a strip tease like the hottest woman ever you pay her a million dollars a year she does elon. a strip tease for you for every rep that you do and then maybe someone gives you a blowjob after every set and then there's someone <laughs> they're giving you a massage feeding you fucking grapes right fanning you with like all it big banana leaves and like you have whatever tv show you want they just they make a tv show for you literally in the gym just saying hey elon musk you go girl you're so great you just fucking bench all those fucking weights like and you'd like you have so much fucking money i think it's just a priorities but, thing they just say like i don't care yeah, but what i don't get as well you have like more money than god and you can't find the time one hour one hour for maybe two to three times per week to just put your fucking reps in. I don't I, like, and that's what I mean. Like while you're, because it would be so easy to integrate. It's like, you can still run your business, right? Think how much money he would have just wherever you're doing your business, have a room next to it with the gym shit. And then you're on a fucking tele call or a zoom call or whatever, while you're fucking working out. We're not even saying, I'm not even saying you have to set aside an hour. You can still do business. You can be dictating to your secretary writing on the fucking computer while you're bench pressing. Yeah, but while they're it's injecting like one of you the... with fucking steroids and fucking whatever other shit that you can but afford. It, it's like those non-negotiables you and I talked about. Like sleep, and for me, one is working out as well. I mm -hmm. work out. I don't care. Three yeah, times but the a week, difference at is... least, it's like you do it. You know what you're missing. He doesn't. Oh, yeah, good point. I mean, you know in all I mean? honesty, like though, never... in all, like... Elon, I'm not shitting on you. He banged Amber Heard. Now, I we know she's crazy, but still, nice. And that that other chick, that singer <laughs> chick, right? Grimes or whatever, is that? Oh, Grimes? yeah, his, his now the, the, communist the, the, ex. Yeah, the one that they, they named their kid like a series of Roman numerals or something. Yeah, I don't know, man. But like, he banged Heard. I don't know, like, I've, I've banged some hot chicks in my day, but not like Amber. Not gonna lie. Amber, I mean, maybe like uh, there's this. Uh, I'd love to get your opinion on this. Like the ten doesn't exist because your ten is not my ten. I had a, I had a conversation with Troy Francis about this as well. I'm like, look, everything underneath a C cup is irrelevant. He's like, oh really? I don't mind the A cups. I'm like, man, you're insane. But that just shows I you love, that uh, I love the small titties. Are you kidding? Yeah, me? That's but, like absolutely my type. Yeah, yeah, I'm my type not, is like fan. small, puffy fucking titties. And I know that's like such a not a fucking i don't like big booties either i like them as small as possible i like them tight like there is yeah. a giant difference between like big ass and tight ass and the same goes with tits yeah but that's because you're a gym guy so you're gonna like a big butt but it's got to be I'm like not... she's fucking cranking out the hip thrusts shit like that like i don't want a huge or anything mm -hmm. like yeah because then I... that starts being logistically a nightmare because you got to try and navigate your penis in there. And it's like, <laughs> fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's good for the hands, though. It's like a yeah. good yeah. surface to yeah. just smack. Yeah. But like, even like the, the hips, I like them like slender mm -hmm. kind of thing. A wasp waist apparently is what it's called, what I'm into. Mm -hmm. So you can't have the giant ass. But the, the problem with that is, it is like, you can't have the large tits either. It's like the, the you waist can. You just I have prefer. to bolt them on. Yeah, 
it's like i'm sorry i'm sorry chick but yeah i i thank god we have the technology to to get my preference <laughs> it's like that builder bear but you're building a wall <laughs> construct the exactly <laughs> see this is this this podcast has devolved into the feminist worst nightmare like literally fucking object isn't like, that the it. whole thing i mean say whatever you want but so um like remember what you mentioned about it did you ever get recognized outside of mm -hmm. like the internet i had it the other way around i had people in my real life find find me mm -hmm. it's like yeah, like I that, had to, yeah, yeah that was a thing to explain because when it, back when I had Twitter, I was uh, every now and then I just got edgy, just for the hell of it, like provocative. Fucking Rolo to Massey. Uh, well, not even Rolo retweeting Rolo, but just getting provocative, like fake tits for all, and uh, in the BDSM trend, like women are pets, which of course yep. they're not. It's all a consensual thing, but there was some guy who had a BDSM photo of a guy with a girl on a leash, mm -hmm. and I read it to it retweet that with like this atrocious statement even though like in consent blah 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 and one of the guys in my real life found that and they were like what the ever loving crap is this but the horrible part was they didn't text me they didn't text me they showed it to their wife their wife texted their sister who was married to my best friend who showed yeah, me is like yeah you got found why is it probably fucking well, the, the beautiful thing that. is that, like, uh, my best friend's wife knows what I'm about. And she's like, no, I know what you mean. Like, it's it's not for us, but we know what you mean. Unfortunately, though, her sister and her husband are kind of like, what, misogynistic, blah, blah, blah. But he's a bitch, so I don't care. <laughs> Have fun with your fat wife. It's like... <laughs> I feel like it's, it's that classic statement, man, of, like, those in glass houses don't throw stones. Like... Oh, yeah. 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 exactly but like men t what what i really hated about that is that every guy when you have him alone will agree with some red pill oh, stuff yeah are you kidding me yeah dude yeah the locker room is a, like a cesspool of this mm -hmm. but i love it mm -hmm. like every now and then you just want to be egregious you just want to be egregious for egregious sake make make a bit of a Make a bit of a joke out of something, but then all of yeah, a sudden, I... when when everybody's in public, it's like, "Oh, you can't say that!" And, oh, what? Fuck off! <laughs> You're preaching to the choir. You're preaching to the person who loves to. I wish Imogen was here right now so she could agree. Like, I love to just be wrong for the sake of wrong. Like, someone says you can't say something, so I'll just say it and say, "I said it." Like, I mean, that was a... something magical with that. I mean, do you remember Milo Yiannopoulos? Yeah, don't know if yeah. You, Milo oh, was like the definition of just saying what you're not supposed to say. Exactly. That was his entire business model. Yeah. Like he knew at certain point, he was strangely very accurate on his birth control article, but I won't get into that. <laughs> he got Hillary Clinton to mention his headlines. <laughs> that oh. man must have had a field day. That man must have had a field day because he had this like these very provocative headlines and uh, Hillary Clinton wanted to make a statement and mm -hmm. she started reading his headlines and he just had a field day with it. He's like, I got Hillary Clinton to say that shit. Like, get on my level. <laughs> <laughs> but goddamn, <laughs> where are we going with all of this? Just hanging out. Fuck it. Uh, red pill self-improvement respect mm. bonus oh yeah respect bonus yeah and then i mentioned the whole isn't it more like appreciation like you really appreciate that person and why i say that is um so there's one person who i respect the hell out of and that is like my kickboxing teacher most mm -hmm. kind man you will ever meet really he's friendly he's kind of just a warm presence whatever but he will lay waste to everything in sight when he would want to mm -hmm. and that is just a feeling you have when he walks in i'm like that's respect mm -hmm. and i've never had that for like anybody really when it comes to the feeling i had for like the ex i just mentioned when she achieved something 
So that's where like the whole language thinks I'm pissing vinegar here, like splitting hairs. But know what I'm saying? I do understand what you're saying. But are you? So do you think you could ever? Oh God, this is going to be taken out of context. Oh so yeah, they, I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> what am I going to ask? I want to hear if we're on the same wavelength. Well, you were probably going to ask if I was able to respect women, weren't you? Yeah, if you would ever be able to respect a woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I okay, have an example so, so, of that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So my best friend's wife, I respect the hell of that woman. But not because she has some career or whatever or blah, 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 blah. blah. She is one of those uh, rare, very rare cases where father was in the household, he was present, mm -hmm. and they waited till marriage. Mm -hmm. And now, like, she wasn't his first, but he was her first kind of thing. And she is just into it. Like, those kids will be raised. Mm -hmm. And I will support my husband and things like that. She's taking care of herself so she can show up the best she can kind of thing and that so i just is... respect enormously why because she is not folding to the narrative there you go there you go yeah she's not folding to the narrative she's like no these kids are my life they mm -hmm. cannot function because they're too young without me so i will give what i have to them and my husband and it's not this oppressive thing or whatever it really isn't like they're very like th the world is messed up right now it is rare to see a family that is actually happy and they have it kind of thing and because they understand the dynamic so much and she even mentioned it to me where it's like Jack, it's so hard to find like-minded people because like even in her pregnancy group kind of thing, she had like women who got the child and it's like, well, I can't wait to go back to work again, even though my infant is six months old and needs nourishment and things like that. Oh no, we have formula for that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you stay at home? Why don't you go to work? And she's not folding. She's like, so no, is it... why, why would I want to sit behind a fucking computer doing spreadsheets while I have a kid? It's like, yes. So it's it's her principles, essentially, or is it, would you say it's like her integrity in the face of like outside influence? She's like, no, I know what the truth is, or I know what my truth is, and I'm going to live that. Yes. Like steadfastness. And not, yes. And not only that, but also like she was a vegetarian before she got pregnant and shit like that. Then she found out that like a vegetarian diet isn't good for the fetus or whatever. She threw that shit out the window. Mm -hmm. so it's like, I, I don't care that I want to like save the planet and help the animals. Like apparently a vegetarian diet isn't good for the fetus. Therefore I shall eat meat. Screw my principles kind of thing. Mm. Mm. And I think it, that's, no, sorry, you go. Well, it, it's not necessarily that I'm now saying, oh, I can only respect mothers. It's not that. But I get what you're talking about. Yeah. It sounds like you're talking more about principles. There's a lot going on here, you know what I mean? I'm sure you don't just have one fucking reason why you respect her. Mm. But I do understand what you mean. And do you think that that's been influenced a lot by being quite red pill? And let me finish that statement there. The further you get into like, let's just not even use the red pill. Let's just say self-improvement and like maybe honesty and, and all that kind of stuff, which is essentially what the red pill is for. The further you get into that, you find that you, or at least I've found that it's harder to relate to people that don't have integrity or who will lie to themselves or who will believe lies or who will not stand up for truth or who will not stand up for the things that they want themselves and like at least be honest with themselves and say hey i want this goal or I, I want to achieve this or whatever it is it feels harder to connect to those people and so i feel like when you do find someone who's on the same wavelength or who's operating on the same frequency as in someone who wants to speak the truth as best as they can who wants to live with integrity as best they can who has goals and who understands themselves and who wants to raise up rather than just be complacent 
Man, I feel like those people are like a fucking torch in the middle of a dark like cave or something. It's like they, you spot them a mile away. You really do. It's so hard to find. And you appreciate it so much more when you find them. So I, weird. Because... I have this. Go ahead. I was going to say, I have this feeling that everyone wants to be like that, but they just haven't given. And, and maybe that's just because a big part of like my mission and what I've worked on with people is trying to pick up the underdogs and say, hey, like you're allowed to be like this, like essentially trying to red pill the blue pill people. And I, I think everyone wants to deep down, like embrace all of this stuff. I think they just have so many stories and programming and beliefs and, you know, like they're plugged pretty fucking heavily into the matrix, so to speak. And as they say in the matrix, they will fight you. They will literally fucking fight you and call you the enemy and, you know, the red pill anger phase and all of that kind of stuff and blue pill conditioning and all of that. Mm. But I think deep down, everybody does want to be woken up. And so I personally, my philosophy as I go through life, I see everyone as like, they want to be woken up. They want to be enlightened rather than, you know, like what you said, which is it's hard to find people like that. And don't take mm -hmm. that as me telling you that you're fucking wrong when you say that. But I, I like I like how it feels when I go through life believing that everybody wants to be woken up, but they're just like fucking naive and really plugged in. I think, and uh, please give give your opinion on this. I think it's the the um, not per se the hard work it takes, but the resistance against it. Yep. Understand what I'm you saying? Know why? It's like, yeah, hmm, you know do why. Tell. One of my friends, shout out to my friend Chris, who's never going to fucking watch this, but shout out to my friend Chris, who gave me the best analogy and the best explanation I've ever heard on this, on why people don't do something like go to the gym or lose weight or, you know, get a promotion at work or quit their job with their shitty boss that they don't like or leave their shitty relationship. The reason why they don't is because they're feeling a lot of discomfort, right? And maybe in terms of unhappiness, or maybe in terms of happiness, they're currently at like a six, right? They're with a, a, a woman who's okay. She's kind of fat and she's, she's all right. And their job is like, okay. And they're comfortably uncomfortable. They're about a six in terms of unhappiness. And then they try this self-improvement thing. Maybe they go to the gym or they sign up for the gym or they, they feel the anxiety when they're about to tell their boss that they're going to quit. And that anxiety or that discomfort in the gym when they first start going, whatever it is, that brings them down to like a three out of 10. And you and I know, hey, motherfucker, if you just stuck in there for another couple of weeks, the gym gets easy. The gym gets fun. The gym gets addictive. Your mm -hmm. boss is only going to be mad at you for a little while and then you fucking quit and you go work somewhere else. The discomfort only lasts for such a small amount of time, but most people don't know that. They think the discomfort is going to last for a long time. And so they see that before I was at least at a five or a six in terms of, of happiness. And yeah, not great. I was very fucking like complacent, but man, going to the gym made me feel like a three. Oh no, gym's not for me. And I've heard this statement. Maybe you have too, where people say the gym isn't for me. I tried it. It hurt. Uh, my legs were really hurt afterwards. Yes. And what I heard a lot as well is that it's complicated, which that is understandable because there is so much garbage mm -hmm. when it comes to the gym out there. And this is with kind of my, too. yeah, this is kind of my angle with the personal training stuff. Keep it simple, mm -hmm. stupid. Yep. Yep. Like yep. People yep. focus on so much garbage. Like, what supplements do I need to take? Motherfucker, what are you eating? You don't need a supplement. They they get shocked when I tell them you don't need whey protein. So, yep. But my but, coach told huh? my gym coach told me the same thing. He's like, you don't need protein powders. You just eat normal food. Yeah. Done. Problem solved. You don't need seven exercises for one muscle group. You need to perform one exercise properly. <laughs> it's like done. You don't need to spend three hours in the gym. If you do it right, you only need an hour. 45 mm -hmm. minutes if you really like cut all the ball crack. Through like, it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. Uh, people are just so confused by all this. Like fitness TikTok and fitness Instagram is like 
God damn it. You man. literally <laughs> sound like my coach right now. Yeah, he's, I like he's him already. said the same shit. He's gone like, man, and he's on Instagram too. And he goes like, I feel like I have to fucking, I'm part of the problem. And his whole mission is, and it sounds like yours is too, to try and make it simple and to not have bullshit on there. But he goes like, man, half of what people are putting on there is just like literally the opposite of like the truth or the opposite of helpful information. But it gets clicks and people, I mean, you can say the same thing with the dating market, right? And dating advice. Half oh, of dating man. advice is like useless shit. Here's the top 10 things to say to her. If she says this and then you say that, and then she says this and then you say that. Here's what to do if you're in a bar and some guy, you know, amogs you. And it's like, when has that ever happened to you? Well, well, here's 10 things that you can do if it does. And it's like, this isn't helpful. This is complicated. Exactly. And about the opener, I found, and I'd love to get your opinion on this one. I found if she is into you, it doesn't it fucking doesn't... matter what you say. Thank Why you. Why the fuck would it matter? <laughs> well, well, okay. To bring it back to, to daddy, daddy fucking, you know, Rollo Tomasi. He wrote this really good name. article, this really good article called Wait For It. And in the article, he says, a woman that is into you will crawl over barbed wire, like crawl, crawl under through mud, you know, crawl through your window in the second floor of your building, fuck you, and then hide in the closet when your wife comes home. She will do anything just to sleep with you. Like you basically... I mean, you can fuck it up, but like, you're probably not going to fuck it up. And so, yeah, you're exactly right. As long as you're getting across the main point, which is like, I'm attracted to you and then talk for a little bit, give me your phone number. Everything else is, I mean, maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, but I really have, I've spent so long exploring a million different openers. I've done it on Tinder too. Oh my God. I've tried literally everything. And mm -hmm. the one thing that it changes is the dynamic of the relationship so what i mean by that is if right from the start you walk up to a woman and you're like yo you're fucking sexy then the dynamic has a more sexual vibe to it if you walk up and you're like hi how's it going like you know you're super cute i wanted to say hi then it's a slightly more chilled dynamic but that's it like it's the same thing as if you started talking about i don't know your favorite band well, your relationship or your casual relationship will now just have the flavor of that band, but that's about it. Everything else is the same. It's such a minor variation, but yeah, guys will just jerk themselves off over which pickup line works best. I get that question all the time. Andy, how come you don't recommend pickup lines? Because I don't, I don't fucking give a shit about that. Like, it's right? not important. We're, we're diving into kind of like what, uh, what troubles or what negative aspects there are in the sphere and i want to ask you one thing because i really need to go to the bathroom real quick take the time to plug all your shit put all the websites in the chat and i'll be back in like a couple of seconds you okay with that sure do you want me to write them in the comments yeah sure don't get me demonetized okay. all i ask <laughs> okay 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 let's do it so everybody the first website that i want you to go to now that jack isn't here is a beautiful gay porn. No, I'm joking. We won't do that. But if you guys want to find more of me, you can just search on YouTube for Kill Your Inner Loser. I have plenty of like dating advice, plenty of getting laid advice, plenty of like relationship advice, plenty of mental health and stoicism and stuff like that. I think now that Jack isn't here and he's probably going to listen to this afterwards, let's, let's talk shit about Jack. Everyone in the comments right now, I want you to write your... Write one fucking nickname that we call Jack when he gets back. Jack Big Dick. Just write a nickname in the comments and I'll see them and then we'll call him that when he gets back. Now I gotta fucking keep this dead out, don't I? It's very weird going on someone else's podcast. If this was my podcast, I'd just be fucking rambling, but I feel like the guest isn't supposed to carry the fucking podcast. Jack's a bad host. Oh my God. He's in trouble. Plenty, plenty, and plenty more. We're not calling him that. Andy's a master of kick-ass intros. Uh, I, I mean, I try with my intros. I try and make a little joke in every single intro to keep it interesting. I've been pretty lazy with the last couple of intros that I've done, man, to be honest. But yeah, I try and keep them interesting. I actually had this massive conversation with one, one of my friends when I first started my YouTube channel about how he fucking hates what most YouTubers do when they do their intro. So I wanted to have like a little joke or something goofy in each one. Here he is, yeah. guys. Stop talking about him. We were literally <laughs> talking. Okay, I was literally talking about you while you were gone. I can imagine. I would do too.
I can't stop talking I, about myself. <laughs> I plugged a gay porn website as soon as you left. Oh, God. Well, I mean, those people are there, too. I mean, they have rights these days. Can't forget about them. I mean, Aaron Clary is a good friend of mine. <laughs> I'm supposed to call you Cheesehead. Oh, very funny, guys. Very funny. What Dutch does that mean, joke. guys? I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. that's... Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I'm Dutch, like a rough translation is Kaskop, which is okay. apparently an insult for Dutch people, but who cares? He's, he's Belgium, I believe, so... You're not, they're not even a country. <laughs> Belgium. He probably eats... There's got to be some fucking Brussels sprouts joke in there. Ah, somewhere. Somewhere. Like, the Belgians... Belgians have good chocolate, though. Gotta give yeah, them that. that's true. That's and true. The, the female accent, the Belgian female accent is just to die for. I I'm feel like not... most European accents are pretty good. Dutch is pretty cute. Uh, well, not and all German your women one. are called like Helga, right? No, that's German. Our, most of our women are called... Uh... Dutch and German are basically the same, right? Oh, ow. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> no, that's ow. like, bro, that's like if you come in and say, like, Austrians are, are German, right? And it's just like, bro, that's a soft spot. But oh, but yeah. Hitler was Austrian, wasn't he? It's like, oh, shh. Ooh, and, uh, uh, what's the other one? Like, New Zealand and Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're these, like, they're our sheep fucking cousins. <laughs> so, <sorry>. sheep, <laughs> sheep, sheep love making cousins over the water. Yeah. It's like the Athenians and the Spartans, like, boy lovers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> terrible, terrible. You see, like, I miss this in the sphere where you can actually just joke around with each other instead of having the accusation like debates. of... No, yeah. j just having fun instead of having the accusation of disrespect. You know what I mean? Like, pull a joke on somebody and immediately instead of like, oh, you're disrespecting me, bro, where it's like, okay, good one. It's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but how much of that is... Like drama for clickbaits and stuff like that. I don't know how much people actually care about that. I like, like as in, don't. I don't know how much the content creators are actually upset because that would be very against the whole point of Red Pill, which is stoicism. Oh, yeah. That's why I was so happy. Like, when you mentioned to me, can we please stay away from the drama? It's like, yes, please. Please. I, if there's one negative aspect about this sphere, it's this grandizing or needing to like build oneself up by tearing others down where it's like yeah dude man. if somebody makes a takedown video of you or whatever why not just ignore it yeah yeah you see that a lot even with like people who aren't in content like on the red pill on, on reddit mm -hmm. i i post a lot of my articles on there like i'll just copy paste the contents of the article um as a reddit post I just don't read the comments. I haven't for years. Because Post it's and just notes. like, yeah, no, you just can't read that stuff. And like, I have a very thick skin, but at some point it's like, okay, you're just actually not living the whole premise of the red pill, which is to build yourself up and to build your brothers up. You're now tearing down. That seems like the opposite of what this place, you know, maybe I have like rose tinted glasses, but I always saw the red pill as like this, you know, we grab each brother, we link arms, and we go, like, let's fucking go to war together. Let's do something amazing together. No, what, like, I thought the whole point of, at least on Reddit, the red pill was, like, you know, the rest of society doesn't understand us. And, you know, feminization of society and, and, and the feminine imperative and all of that kind of stuff. And so we got to look out for each other. And it just doesn't seem to always be enforced at least not anymore so yeah i haven't i haven't checked any comments on there for years and now. and and we end up tearing each up sorry we end up tearing each other apart like bitches mm. it's like jesus mm. christ guys and gossip yeah. things like that so um in your opinion what are some of the things like in the male self improvement sphere sphere that we call the red pill mm. could be improved upon i think a lot of notions about women come from a very like hateful place um maybe i'm talking more about what rollo tomasi can do a lot and what the red pill on reddit do a lot where it's just sort of like almost and they keep crying out you know i'm not complaining this isn't complaining we're not complaining and maybe it's my tint on it but i feel like if you just keep non-stop talking about feminism at some point I don't know. I just, I can't help but think like, how is this actually helping you? How do you feel 
when you talk about this? How do you feel when you listen to this? Does this give you a an optimistic version of the vision of the future? Does this make you want to go out and kick some fucking ass? Or does it kind of disempower you? Do you feel like the powers that be, so to speak, are against you? Do you feel small? Do you feel like less likely to go out and actually improve yourself? So I don't know what your opinion on that is, but I see that as like not necessarily helpful. Well, very good point. Like at a certain point, this this weird notion of fighting feminism, I'm like, you ain't gonna fight shit. You ain't gonna fight shit. Like get your own life in order. There's a lot about, um, we're gonna change society. Change yourself first. Yeah, that's a very Jordan Peterson idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like get and, your own shit together. Yeah, and like my, <laughs> my biggest problem with Rolo is his fans. Yeah. In all honesty, because when you read the rational mail, it's just good. It's very objective. There is, mm -hmm. and I tried to like find something very subjective in there to actually be able to make finally a normal argument like against him because his critics are the worst. Most mm -hmm. of his critics take everything he says subjectively and they put their own spin on it kind of thing. Even though, like, Rolo himself, and I haven't watched a show of his in a while because they're, like, four hours long. But he's very objective in things. But then people go with what he said and make this entire emotional narrative on it where I'm like, yeah, you kind of missed the point. You kind of missed the point. Like, here are the objective facts and what you do with it. And maybe because that is he doesn't write in prescriptions. That's but what the, I think it is, man. I think it's yeah. that that thing, last thing that you said. Every time I ever read the red pill, like I took it very rationally and I was like, okay, like what can I do with this? Like how can I make myself a better man with this? But because he doesn't prescribe and he doesn't want to, and he literally says I'm not prescribed. That's not true because he has a second book, which is, I think it's called Preventative Medicine, right? Yeah, Preventative Medicine, but, exactly. But that's just one book. That's not most of his content. And so, so my point is most people come to it and just hear it and they go, oh, okay, so what I should do is be unhappy or I should complain or I should go yell at some feminists. And it's like, that doesn't make yeah. you a better man. Exactly. And then they point the finger to Rolo where it's like, no, 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 I didn't tell you to be sad or anything, but apparently my information makes you sad. And there is a lack of reflection there. Mm. It's like you're, you're pointing towards him whining about how he makes you feel. And that's not the issue. You need to point that finger at yourself. Like, how does this make me feel? Plus, how can I make it work for me? Oh, good one, good one. I wanted to ask you this. What's your opinion on the 80-20 rule? In general, like the Pareto pr principle? Yeah, just like in general in, and how it applies life. to dating. Okay, I'm assuming you mean like 20% of the men get 80% of the women like that? Yeah, it's like only 20% of the guys are attractive. <laughs> I, okay, well, I, I haven't even, I mean, I guess the red pill does say that sometimes. So I'm thinking on my feet here. I would, if I heard that, my very first thought would be like, all right, how do I become the 20? Like that, that would be my very first thought. And I think it's, I think that number is skewed. Like, what am I trying to say? I don't think that then means 80% of guys get no action whatsoever and they're going to be destined to misery and, oh, well, I'm, I'm sh I see this all the fucking time, man. I'm short, so therefore I can't get laid. I'm bald, so I can't get laid. And it's like, so am I. Or I'm Asian, I can't get laid. I've done so much content that fights against that. So I think people use that general principle of the Pareto princi like principle to be an excuse and to say, rather than let me become the 20, top 20%, I can't statistically speaking, I can't fit in the 20%. So I shouldn't even try. So I, I see a lot of stuff like that as people using stuff that is meant to be inspiring as like a fucking excuse. And they use it to be hopeless. And I guess you could say to fulfill their own narratives that they already had, they already wanted it to be hopeless and for their sex life to suck and for them to be unhappy. And they use something like that to go like, Oh yeah, see, therefore I can't be the 20%. So that's evidence. I don't mm -hmm. think that's why. I'm assuming Rolo says that, but I don't think that's what any of the red pill people. Well, are it's intending. not necessarily Rolo says it. It's like, uh, do you know Dataclism? That book. So it is taken I'll from look it actual. Up after the call. Yeah, but it, it is like actual data. So there is truth to it. But it is, in my humble opinion, the most misinterpreted statistic out there. 
Because, mm -hmm. and you know this, does Tinder have a mileage setting, radius? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So top 20% in that radius. Mm -hmm. Is the sexual marketplace um, geographical? Like, is it situational as well? Like, I go to a bar. That bar is now a sexual marketplace. Yeah, yeah. I do day game. My direct surroundings of day game are now a sexual marketplace. I lower my standards, or I prefer to phrase that as I'm more open-minded with my standards, and now the sexual marketplace, I'm in the top fucking 20%. Like, that's... And that's another factor that people don't even talk about at all. It's exactly. like, who are you actually going for? And where are you doing it? Like online dating, maybe you're not the top 20%. A lot of guys will go like, I can't get any matches on Tinder. You know, it's not fair. The number one thing I do with my coaching client, because my coaching programs are only 12 weeks. So we've only got like 12 weeks to work together. Guys that get zero matches on Tinder, I will say, go the fuck outside right now. You march yourself outside and you start talking to some fucking women. I want to see you doing at least one approach a day, but man, we're going to bump that up to about 10 every day. And Dude, the number of guys that literally get zero matches on Tinder, so therefore they're not in the top 20%, they go outside and women will pay attention to them because guess what? Now you're top 0.1%. Who the fuck else outside is hitting on women? Confidently, assertively, directly. Basically no one. And so, nah. yeah, this whole premise of like 20%, I think it's just used as an excuse and it doesn't mm. have to be that way. Have you ever read Gendernomics by uh, Black Label Logic? No. He has... A couple of great books on that gender gender nomics one and two and he goes into that he's like the sexual marketplace is situational it mm -hmm. depends on where you are now mm -hmm. this whole idea of the global sexual marketplace is it a thing because of instagram and things like that well even instagram in and of itself is a separate sexual marketplace yeah but almost everybody has social media yeah but even in social media you get the same thing there is an instagram fitness sexual marketplace there is an instagram model sexual marketplace there's a goddamn instagram foodie sexual marketplace for god's sake yeah dude like the the one thing that i hear people talking about all the time where they're like oh i'm i'm nerdy you know i can't get any girls and it's like bro go to a comic-con convention are you kidding dude. me like Have you the most nerdy guy gets chicks? all the chicks. That's what I mean. And so I fully agree with this idea of like the, the way that I phrase it to a lot of guys when they're trying to come up with like a Tinder profile or something or like which pictures they want to take. I always say, think about the vibe that you're going to give off, which is another way of talking about what we're talking about here. Like which marketplace are you going to be in? And so maybe you want to give off the vibe of like rich, confident, older dude. That's a marketplace. Maybe you want to give off the vibe of like, you know, I got one friend who just travels a bunch and he has photos of him in different different cities he looks like the adventurous dude i have some friends like my tinder profile is entirely like bdsm pictures because i you give did off the, like, inspire me by the way to do <laughs> one sort of photo mm -hmm. so i found cuffs in uh, a red color with like mm -hmm. white fur mm -hmm. perfect christmas thing mm -hmm. <laughs> so that one Cri photo christmas. of you with christmas so that one photo of you with the cuffs i was like mm -hmm. You know what I should do? Like make with kind that of little the same Santa hat, bingo, and a Christmas sweater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Like one of those that. really ugly Christmas sweaters. You have to do that. You have to do that. And maybe you I get know. a girl that you're seeing as well to like kneel down below you, and she's wearing like an elf costume. Maybe mm -hmm. she's got a blindfold. <laughs> that would Perfect. be hilarious. Yeah, do it. I might do get it. that one. Mm. Do it. I'll, I'll keep you posted, but go on, go on. Like uh, the vibe you're giving off on uh, your Tinder profile. To basically just different vibes is almost like you're a different genre of man. And so now you're almost operating in a different marketplace. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's some overlap, like girls will go for different types of guys, but yeah, generally speaking, it's a different marketplace. Can you imagine not every woman has the same taste? Okay. 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 So your question before, okay. So. Your question before, um, what would we improve or what would, how would I rewrite parts of the red pill? Because I am God and I get to decide, you know, what the red pill should be. <laughs> but essentially, the, the, I was talking to my girlfriend, Imi, about this before this call because I knew we were going to talk about the red pill and stuff. And she said, you have to talk about the concept of a Walt, that all women are like that and all women are exactly the same. And it's like, that's, that's something that I think is completely misunderstood in the red pill. 
I think mm-hmm. certain people they just take it to the extreme and they're like, okay, so every single woman is a carbon copy robot of all the other ones, and they're all going to cheat on you. And they're all going to go and date like some billionaire Elon Musk, you know, rich fucking daddy. I think it's just taken to this utter complete fucking extreme where it's almost like a parody of itself. And I don't know if anyone actually understands the original concept. And I'll be honest, I don't even understand what the original concept is meant to be. I can try. <laughs> okay, go. It's not all women are like that. It's all women can be like that. And it's very situational. Like if you are messing things up, she probably, there is a likelihood she will monkey branch. Like all women are hypergamous, but will they all act on it? Well, it depends who you are to her. Are you in her direct surroundings, the best guy she can be with? Mm -hmm. let's say you're messing things up because women can be ruthless when it comes to that. Like if you're really messing things up and you become a bit of a pussy and things like that, she's not going to jump to some billionaire, but she is going to jump to a better option. But she needs to be externally motivated for that to not see you anymore as the best option. Mm -hmm. So it's like not all snakes are poisonous, but all snakes can be poisonous. So treat them like that. So all women are hypergamous, but they're not always going to act on it. But behave as if she is going to. So be the best version of yourself for yourself. But see, like, okay, so 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 like here's where I think it's like not even a red pill concept. I think that I would rephrase that entire concept as like all people can be like that. And yes. what I'm getting at here is I think – Again, this is where I think so much of the red pill like focuses on like nerdy, like very specifics and people will fight to the death of something like that rather than taking a step back and looking at the actual principle. And I know I fucking cut you off as you were literally explaining the principle, but that's okay. So, man. So I'll let you jump in here in a second, but I think the principle is don't give a shit about a wall. Like that doesn't fucking matter. It's improve yourself, be the best man you can be like absolutely fucking give to yourself. And then if she wants to hang around, awesome. If she doesn't awesome, like. Your life goes on exactly the same. I feel like that's the print. I wish, I wish that all a what wasn't said as a what. I wish it was just said as like, yo, if you let yourself go, women will probably leave you. Yeah, it's like, and it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah, I'd leave yeah, me I'd too be- if I let myself go. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of like Donovan Sharp used to say this. It's like I am glad women are hypergamous. And people are like, they tell oh, they you tell you what you need to know. Yeah, they tell it's you like, when yo, you're fucking a- up. <laughs> You've been a fat, lazy prick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're the last Can to you... know. Like, they're Wait. more enlightened than you. Wait, can you blame them? Can you blame no, that's them? Like, like, th- that's exactly what I said. I'd leave me too if I got fat, lazy for long enough and didn't make any ch- Like, if I completely changed as a human being or as the man that she fell in love with, it's like I wouldn't want her to stay. She would be enabling that bad behavior. And I think that's where the negativity of a world comes from because it's a reflection of what you need to do as a man to actually be attractive. And that's put in the work like -hmm. like it or not. We have the quote unquote red pill jargon here, burden of performance. Mm -hmm. We just have that. She doesn't love you for who you are, but what you are, which is misinterpreted as well, Mm -hmm. where it's like, look, she loves you because you kick ass. Because you are this amazing guy who goes after what he wants, who takes care of himself for himself, and she cannot divert you from that path. If you were, sort of say, lose all that, then she's going to say, hey, all these things that you were, what you were, is gone. Like, Mm -hmm. I like you and all that, but the reasons I find you attractive are gone. And that, sorry... But to me, that's perfectly understandable. It's like, yeah. that's not a negative thing. That's a pretty good thing. Like, but don't... wouldn't, so here's my question. Doesn't that apply backwards? I think exactly. that's always been my contention with AWOL is that it's always said as like women will do all this stuff. And I think that's where it gets misunderstood because a lot of people take that to mean, okay, so it's only women who do this. And my extension of that has always been like, no, like guys will branch swing too. Like if a woman suddenly ballooned up and gained a hundred kilograms and completely went to shit and all of that it's like 
I wouldn't encourage that guy to stay. Maybe you stay for long enough to see if you can fix the problem and maybe she's just depressed and you, you know, have loyalty there and stuff. But if after a couple of years, she's exactly the same and shows no signs of wanting to change and you talk to her about it and she goes like, no, you can't tell me to change. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care that you said just be thin is the only requirement of the relationship. I would encourage most guys to, to jump too. Yeah. Like I wouldn't. So yeah, I think it's, it's taken as like an all women thing. And I think a lot of the red pill does that man, where it's like, they're explaining to guys how women are. And then a lot of guys hear that as like, oh, so only women are like that. And then they start hating women. They're like, oh, bitches will just branch swing. And it's like, no, it's not meant for that. It's just the whole point is don't let yourself get lazy. And so that's how I'd rewrite that. I'd say I'd yeah. ditch the whole a what label. And I'd just say women will leave you if you get really fucking lazy. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of dislike the whole, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there are people who then say, oh, but men are hypogamous or something like that. It's like, as in they'll no. stay like loyalty. No, 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 no. As in like, but <clears throat> men want to oh, date, date up down. as well. Date up. Like men want to date up as well. Like younger, harder, tighter. It's like, no, not every female equivalent so. has a male equivalent. I don't think so. Yeah. No, no, they they don't kind of thing. Like the whole we find women attractive for far different things than women find us attractive. Thank God. Because and I think a lot of guys will happily I think a lot of guys will happily date down as well because there's almost this sense of like oh, it's my yeah. masculine duty. Or like that that white knight element of like and I'm not even saying that's a bad thing. It's like, no, I want to nurture and look after and like helpfully build her up. Yeah it's it's yeah. settling for less kind of thing and that was kind of my my remark about the 30 year olds thing where it's like yeah mm. look what what i just see a lot of and if any guy and i'm willing to die on this hill gun to the head ask him who would you rather date like hot tight early 20s girl or 30 years old and you kind of know like whatever blah 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 the guys who now like pridefully say like i finally got a girlfriend blah 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 they would definitely go for like the younger one and my my problem with is with it is the denial of that kind of thing like there's nothing yeah. wrong with the 30 lack old of women. don't get me wrong that's just an example to use and exactly the lack of integrity Go but here, here, okay, here's here's where I'd like. So I agree with you in, in that context. But I think a lot of guys and you. So you almost made like this, you know, straw man apex fallacy almost by saying, "If I had a gun to his head," and it's like, "Yeah, but you don't." And so when you asked most guys, they can lie to themselves. They can lie to you. It's only when you actually, you know, when push comes to shove, and you say, "No, no, no, gun to your head," literally. And so I think I don't actually think they're lying. I don't think they realize they're lying. I don't even think it's a lie. And I think if you actually asked most of them, like, do you want or, or all the guys that do want a 30 year old over like a 20 year old, if you said like, why do you want it? They would give you a lot of reasons like, oh, the 20 year old intimidates me. She won't be able to understand me. You know, maybe I'm scared of her because she's hotter. And maybe I don't, if they're actually going to be honest, they'd probably say something like, I don't think I deserve her. I don't think I'm attractive enough for her. I don't know that I could keep her around. It would be pressure if I was with her because I'd be constantly thinking she's just going to fuck off and not be loyal. So I think it's like that. And that's the truth that they would say. And I this is why you're going to love dataclism. This is why you're okay. going to love dataclism because they have this, um, what is it? Metadata on the swiping behavior of men. Mm -hmm. Like you have like, what was it? 18 to like 60 year old men on dating apps who all and like 21 year old women it's insane it's insane like well, who do they swipe right the most on like the age of women it's all 21 23 21 yeah. 23 i've and seen then, that okay cupid did a similar yeah um, that's graph. the one yeah. and apparently when men turn 47 all of a sudden it's like oh no 24 years old likes looks good as well and then they turn 48 and then it's back to 23 it's such yeah. a weird graph so it kind of yeah. comes from there and in all honesty like even in my own behavior, because I tested that out where it's like, okay. So I put Tinder to like older women and things like that. I don't swipe right on them as, as many times as on the younger ones kind of thing. Okay. But here's, so yes, yes. 
But here's where I've, because I've done a lot of thinking about like, why are there just hotter women in their 20s on Tinder versus like, why do I not like the 30 year old women as much on Tinder? And it's like, because the hot ones are probably taken, man. Mm. Whereas when they're 20, they just haven't had enough time. They're, they're checking out their options. They're, they're dating. They're all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so- I, I always wondered as well, like, why are you still single? Like, what is the most sought after commodity in the world? And I, I'm so... I try to be as open-minded as I possibly can with each person that I swipe on, each person that I match with, I should say. But there is like a little investigation period whenever I match with a woman over, I don't know, like 27. There's like a little investigation. I'm like, hey, how's your life going? What are your goals? What do you do for fun? How's your social life? Like just a little bit of prodding and prying to see. Mm -hmm. And if I like her answers and she says like, you know, I'm just between boyfriends or something, or I was with a guy and I don't know, we broke up. If it seems like a relative answer, it's like relatively, you know, decent answer. Okay, fine. But yeah, you do a little bit of prying. And a lot of the time it's like, guys just won't commit to me. And it's like, okay, well, so there's no self-awareness and there's no, Mm -hmm. like nothing you can do and you're just a hopeless victim. So I'm going to be the next in that line of people that let you down. You're telling yourself a story of how men keep disappointing you. And I have to fit into that narrative or you'll fucking make me fit into that narrative. And so no matter what I've, what I do, no matter how, like literally nothing I do, you will just put me into that fucking narrative. And I don't really want to line up and be the next in that fucking, you know, checklist of guys that you fucking ditch and then blame oh man this is like a good one for guys as well don't bat mouth your ex just don't bat mouth your ex yeah just don't yeah and that's one of the biggest fucking signs because it shows a complete lack of awareness yep like a a lack of accountability yeah if there are any women listening to this don't talk down your ex either it's like (laughs) just don't (laughs) like nine out of ten i don't even want to hear it but if you start talking down on him it's kind the of like thing, yeah the thing that trips me when people do that right especially when they you know how many how many you've you've heard like single mothers that go like oh my husband's like my, my ex is like a deadbeat dad right and they would they would talk shit or people that talk shit about their ex it's like you do understand that when you're talking shit about your ex that is a reflection on you you picked your ex you are literally insulting yourself if nothing else just shut your mouth and keep it quiet and don't say anything well, just say something nice. Find some reason why your ex wasn't that bad a person and why you're happy that you dated them. Or at least show that you've like learned something. But yeah, if you sit there and badmouth your ex, you are literally saying, I'm a victim, I'm hopeless. There's nothing I can do in the future to choose better. And therefore, it's almost like a bad, like why would you get with that person? Because they're essentially admitting, if I pick you, you're also probably a bad Mac. Like I'm literally showing that I'm bad at picking people. So if I'm saying yes to you, that probably says something about you. Well, that's something I liked about Mr. Nice Guy as well. And uh, you know Stefan Molyneux? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I still like to listen to him every now and then, but mostly because he dared to ask the question, and the same thing in uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy, about the parents. Because you and I just talk, we talked about the unconditional love kind of thing. But unfortunately, that can kind of work backwards as well, where it's like, oh, but she's my mother. I have to love her, even though she wasn't crack addict abusive bitch well she is my mother and they don't Mm -hmm. dare to ask the question of hey did she really love me like and is this how people who who love each other behave towards each other because it can give you a very skewed image of love Mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah man it can be pretty brutal and that's where I liked a lot of the red pill stuff as well, where it taught me to dare to ask those questions where it's not for granted that you love someone, even family say, Oh, but yeah, those are my parents. I'm supposed to love them. And that's the danger. I'm supposed to. It's like, I think it's hot. Like a lot of the red pill is, intended to be questioning as in you're supposed to go out and do your own investigation which is why okay if we while we're sitting here like fixing the fucking red pill one other thing i would love to see is more encouragement for people to experiment rather than the red pill can often fall into the habit of just giving out doctrines as if it's the holy bible and everything that is said there is absolutely correct 
And if you dare to question anything, or if you dare to say like, but is this actually true? Like, can I find out for myself? They say, no, how dare you? If you go out and experiment on that one idea, that means you're a beta male, you're a faggot and you're a cuck. You're not allowed to explore that. Like we've already done it for you and we've decided this is the one true way. And so I do see a lot of almost like fucking like religious zealotry over there. And so, so to, to pull it back, one part of the red pill that I do like with quite a few people is this questioning of like society's rules, I guess. And, and things like, am I supposed to love my family just because they're my family? Am I supposed to just love women? Are women perfect? Like, are women just perfect because they're women? I think the red pill encourages you to question that and think about that and say like, well, no, actually, funnily enough, women are just human, which means they can fuck up, which means that they're not all perfect princesses, which means that I'm not supposed to just love them and respect. Fuck, man, we can talk about respect. I think one thing the red pill does well is they, they explain the difference between um, maybe females version of respect and what most guys version is, which for females, it's like, you have to respect me. And it's like, guys will come along and say, you haven't done anything to earn my respect that you're just a nobody. I don't know you. Yeah, but you should respect nobodies. And it's like, male mm -hmm. respect doesn't work like that. And and that's exactly kind of what I meant with the respect thing where I th it truly has been taken out of context because... And I've called girls out on this. It's like, you need to respect me. No, 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 dear. I need to treat you with decency. That's what yes, you mean. Yes, correct. Yeah. And I will. You're talking about social etiquette. Yes. Yeah. You haven't and earned respect yet. Bingo. Like, respect I got from my kickboxing instructor who walks in and can decimate everything. But you, dear, I will treat with decency. And they're like, like every now and then you meet this one girl who like, oh, yeah, you're right. And others who just malfunction. It's like, the ideology told me <laughs> yeah i think it's just said i think a lot of this sort of stuff is just said as like memes it's a bunch of people like just spouting memes as in when i say meme i use the actual literal meaning of meme which is where you just say something that someone else said and so things like you have to respect me you have to respect women i think that's just said as a fucking meme i don't think they've ever sort of investigated what that actually means whether or not it's possible to just show respect to someone you don't know what respect actually means etc they're just sort of saying something so exactly um back to the uh how much time you got by the way i got all the time in the world nice oh i appreciate that it means a lot to me the uh, the canned lines so things that could be like changed in the manosphere there is a lot of be like me it worked for me yeah dude there's so much like again i call it doctrine but yeah, yeah there's so much of that like i am the expert you shut up and listen to me my path is the one true path and you tell me if you've if you've sort of stumbled upon this the more you coach other people the more you realize like fuck what worked for me might not always work for the other person i might have to tweak some shit because they have their own life experiences maybe they can't squat because their knee is just fucked and no matter how much i want them to squat they can't I have to figure out some other solutions. So it's a very like humbling experience. At least I've found it. Hmm. No, it is. But like, uh, you know, Stan Efferding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the fucking rhino. Yeah. The rhino, world's strongest bodybuilder and inventor of the cooler. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love his uh, viewpoint of what's the best schedule, the one that you can follow. Mm -hmm. What's the best diet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yep. one that you can follow. Yep. Like there are like certain pillars of all of this. But as long as it's it follows kind of that, you can do whatever you want kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same with dating. Like we just mentioned, if she's into you, the opener doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I've been forward with chicks where it's like, damn, just damn. <laughs> or like the casual of like, hey, insert name. How's your insert time of the day? And they go with that. You have a conversation. You go by something that's been said in the photo or whatever. Or mm -hmm. do you like purposefully call out certain body poses on Tinder? No, I just, I've... I'm very, I just do my th fucking template. And I just, I almost don't look at their pictures or their bio, if that makes sense. Because I've oh, found I like what whatever's you... on Tinder is just like, it's not a, a reflection of the person. So my mission is always to just get them out on a date ASAP so I can actually see if I like them or not. Because, yeah, people... And I do the same, right? We're all putting our best foot forward on Tinder. But I feel like mm -hmm. it's just not a reflection of the person. But what no. are you going to say about poses? Well, 
some girls just have poses on their Tinder photos. And I'm like, you just want somebody to mention that. You just want somebody to mention like, oh, those trousers look great on your ass or blah, 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 this or that. Yeah, and that, yeah, I just yeah. call them out on it. It's like, how can I not make a remark on that? Like, yeah, yeah. like what are you trying to do here, dear? And they just go, oh, ha, 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 I just thought it was a good picture, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I never said it wasn't a good picture. And then you move on from there. But it's like, yeah, like you're, you're just. <laughs> Everybody wants a bit of validation. We all do. We all kind of do. Like, say whatever you want, working out for yourself. Like, it just feels damn good to hear when a girl says, I love your arms or whatever. And I just, think, okay, I think that's one thing that the red, some people in the red pill can go really far with. They're like, you have to do everything for you and you shouldn't be doing anything for women. And it's like, I understand the, and I agree with the underlying principle of do things for you, but I wouldn't go so far that you, you know, in that direction that you basically go out and live in the woods by yourself and you don't ever talk to anyone and a bird, t you know, makes a fucking tweeting sound at you and you're like hey i don't need your fucking validation you shut your mouth like you don't need to gotta go be a female person. bird fucking bitches yeah. won't leave me alone <laughs> yeah like the hatred for women has become so large that even like every female species has to be like excluded from life yep yep you gotta you gotta <laughs> punch a grandma in the face every day men only <laughs> dude i've i've had people i've had people literally say that where like I did a podcast with a couple of girls a while ago and they, they did only fans. And so I said to my audience, you know, ask me questions and I'll ask these only fans girls questions about like what it's like to do only fans, what it's like to do porn and sell your body and all that shit. And I had a couple of people that were like, how is this helping the manosphere is like interviewing women like this, it helping the manosphere. And I was like, Jesus, you, you've so far off the deep end that now I literally can only talk to the people that you want me to talk to. Otherwise it's like, I'm betraying the fucking like tribe. And so I can see, I see parts of the red pill that become so fucking tribal that it's almost like you isolate yourself from quite literally 50% of the world. And, and mate, some of them will then take that so far that they'll sort of cut themselves off from anyone they deem beta as well. And so then at that point, you're like, we've cut 95% of the world off then that feels lonely. Pretty much like the same as the whole marriage thing. Like, Oh, people are married, blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, Look, I get it. I wouldn't marry because of like the the whole government involved. I think that's mm -hmm. absolutely retarded. That's, that's exactly the reason that I'm never getting married. Yeah, it's literally yeah, just exactly. the government thing. It's like that's a contract between me and my partner. And well, exactly. No one why that has to have the state's stamp of approval on it. Yeah, exactly. The same as the kids' question, where it's like, <sighs> I, I have other reasons for it as well which i shall not get into now but it's like that whole government intervention thing where it's like dude two people can love each other a lot that they don't want to leave each other anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like married they want to get married they want to solidify that bond however these days that means that like the government is involved so the government aspect from that standpoint i can understand people are like you're insane but from the standpoint of like, why would you want to marry a woman? I'm kind of like, well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? It's like, well, branch swinging, she'll cheat on you. It's like, yeah, yeah she but could that again, okay. if you mess up. But <laughs> and even that, one of my biggest philosophies that I, I, I teach to my audience is you never really want to be doing things out of fear, like coming from a place of fear or anguish or worrying about the future as best you can. You want to be acting from a place of like positive emotions or even just neutral, like stoicism. And so if you ever find yourself acting something out because you're afraid of what might happen, I would take a deep breath. I would meditate. I'd go fucking sit in the woods and write it all out in a, a journal or something, but I would process it and say, do I really want to be avoiding marriage because I'm scared that she will leave me? Is that really how I want to live my life? Or do I want to get myself to a place where, and I'm not saying you have to get married or not. I literally don't give a fuck what people do, but I, I don't want to be living my life based on what might happen and from a fear point of view. So I want to get to a point where if I commit to a woman and she leaves me, Hey, this is what it is. I understand you wanted to go off and be happy without me. It's cool. Like I have enough of my own life going on that I'm not trying to fucking grab you and lock you down. And my happiness isn't dependent on you. 
You, you want me to throw in another red pill maxim that's Do misunderstood? It. She's not yours. It's just your turn. That I've heard, yeah. And it's you know so what? misunderstood. Okay, I was going to say, uh, so how's it misunderstood? Let's start with that. Okay, so why is it misunderstood that they already go from the position of, oh, she's going to leave? And that's not what it meant. It's a detachment statement that she is another human being. Where it's like, yes, it can yes. happen. And you are not entitled to hold her with you. Yeah, it's meant as a freedom. It's meant as a statement of freedom. It's meant to give you your freedom and let go of that controlling aspect of yourself and that fear and that anxiety and that tension of like, let me fucking lock this person down and keep them. Yeah, it's meant to be a statement of freedom, but I agree. It's taken as the opposite of that. It's taken as yeah. like, fuck, she's going to leave me. So I got to close my fucking cold heart off from her and I got to push her away and keep her at arm's length. And it's like, well, that's just going to speed up the process. Why would she stay with someone who's literally emotionally fucking chopped off? What, why would you spend so, time with someone who literally thought that the other person was going to like leave them? Oh. You're essentially saying you're a cheater or you're going to leave me. And she's going to fucking meet you on that. She's going to go, well, fine. You don't ever let me in. So I'm going to leave. Mm. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Typical universe. It's basic psychology, <laughs> psychology, but. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Do you think notch gowns for guys matters? I personally, so here's what I'd say. Plenty of people are, plenty of people get everything that they need out of exploring that side of themselves with like 10 or 20 women, right? Fuck, even some guys, five or 10 women. Other guys need a hundred. And so I think because there's such variation in that, I think that's a way of saying maybe notch count doesn't matter. It's more like, did you use it as a chance for self-improvement? And we can kind of talk about, I don't know if you know, how much you know of like Roosh V and his story? Enough. So I King really of like laid, Roosh. Yeah, I really like I Roosh fucking, and I understand why. He slept with like 2,000 or something women, he says. And during a lot of that, in, especially in these last couple of years, I read a lot of his stuff and there were certain articles that just struck me as like this almost existential pain, like where he was just talking about how he, he felt like he couldn't connect to women anymore. And he felt like he was always searching for something and seeking the next lay because he was trying to get something, trying to scratch some itch that he just couldn't fully scratch. And, you know, he, he went on this, he eventually had this like whether you want to call it a breakdown or a metamorphosis and he found Jesus and all that kind of stuff and deleted his books and his website and threw it all away and said, no, nope, that's old me. I'm new. I'm born again. And I think that happened because he realized at some point, fuck, like the lays aren't enough. Like just sticking my penis in a woman isn't enough. And that doesn't mean you have to rush off and get married. We're not saying that, but it's, it's, it's reflecting it back on yourself. And for him, that was finding Jesus regardless of your opinion of religion or whatever. But that was him, I feel like, coming home to himself and saying, all right, the answer isn't out there. It's not some external thing. It's not 2001 warm, wet holes that is going to give me whatever it is I'm looking for. It's got to be in here. It has to be yep. in here. And for him, he looked upwards, but I feel like that's the same thing as looking inwards. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the whole thing because, and as we just mentioned, like what can change in the manosphere, there's a lot about like run through them, run through them. Just get your game on. Yu-Gi-Oh reference. <laughs> Terrible. But instead of like the number doesn't matter. What matters matters is what you get from it. And like, have yes. you read Free Speech Isn't Free by Rouge? There's a wait, part wait, wait. in is that that's not the No, okay, no, never mind. I'm I'm thinking of something else. But yeah, go, okay. go on. So there's a part in there where he does the tour and somebody asks him, does it ever get boring? By all the notches. Mm -hmm. And even Roosh said, kind of got boring after 25. So if he really has 2,000, imagine how many. Jesus I, Christ. 1,975 of that was just boring. Yeah. I figured out the same thing. It was probably like, I don't know, three or four years ago where I, and so for full context, my girlfriend and I, we, we date and sleep with women together. And I probably like three years ago figured out something where I was like, I don't think I want to just bang more girls. And a lot of my audience couldn't understand that. And I wrote this long article called eventually you end up settling down, which I then rewrote that to slowing down. And the whole premise of this article is it's going to seem fucking insane. 
and you know the newbie who's listening who is a virgin or has only slept with one or two women he's gonna think like oh you you've forsaken me you're you've quit the game like what's wrong with you you've become a beta male pussy like everybody else like but after a certain amount it's like there needs to be something more than just an exchange of sexual energy and, and of fluids in the moment for it to mean something to you because you're constantly you're looking for the next part of your own evolution and so in the same way that i i wouldn't go outside and just i wouldn't go to a casino and just pull the fucking slot machine for the next six hours i'm also not going to go and look at porn for the next you know 20 hours I'm not going to go and drink my, I've, I've quit alcohol. I've, I've quit a few of these vices because they don't fulfill me anymore. They don't give me the next evolution. And so that's why I've moved towards things like the gym. And so the one thing that I, I figured out with my own sex life, you know, especially with my girlfriend is every time we sleep with someone, it has to be someone that we like. It has to be someone who has their own goals and stuff so that it's almost like we get to be accountability partners for each other. Like we're, we're on a mission, you're on a mission we get something out of seeing you and there has to be some sort of like i won't say gain but like something has to be i have to be given some value and i have to be able to give some value i have to be able to influence your life in a positive way you have to give me some sort of that sounds like i'm saying it's like a take take relationship it's not that at all but no, there has but to I be something what... more than just sex no i like get some what you reason mean. we're doing this i get what you mean because i know exactly what you mean because the, the number alone is just like, look, I can get the same thing from just masturbating at home. It and, and, really and, is the same. And it's more that after you've proved, so, so in the early stages of, of getting laid, there is something that you're trying to prove to yourself. You're trying to prove the universe doesn't fucking hate me. I'm not a complete waste of space. I can do this. Women could like me. I am deserving. And that eventually culminates in you being able to look in the mirror and, you know, like yourself or love yourself. That's what you're trying to achieve. Once you've achieved that, the notches will just keep coming for infinity if you just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can see how Roosh got to 2000 lanes. I could, from this point in time, get to 2000 lanes. Like I can see that path. If I just was to keep going and keep grinding and wait 10 years, I'm at 10,000 lanes like two, two, whatever we said, 2000 lanes. Like Didn't you're just you? repeating the same thing over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, no, you're I just know exactly going through the motions at that point. And we call that complacency. And so I think it's, it's an aversion to complacency. I think there's a part of you that knows after a certain amount of like notches, man, I am kind of being lazy and people will sort of still pat you on the back and be like, wow, your life is so glamorous. You're getting laid, but you know that you're not living with integrity. If you pretend that, yeah, this is so cool. This is so exciting. Yeah, I'm a killer. I'm a player. Look at me. I'm having threesomes and BDSM. And there has to be something more or you can't look in the mirror. Yeah, but like even after a while, you know that the numbers don't matter. Like really, uh, maybe a strange example, but even at the gym, nobody fucking cares you can bench 225. <laughs> nobody really does it. And nobody cares you have a lay count of, name something, I don't know, 40, 50, 60, 200. Like some guys care, but those are the guys who couldn't get it. Yeah. Same same as the 225 bench. But if you're a guy who actually goes to the gym, who is consistent with it, whatever, same with dating. And one of my guys, one, he isn't here, unfortunately, green light, had a mm -hmm. fucking good point. He's like, you can have a notch count of 100 and still less sex than a guy with one. Yeah. Yeah. Think yeah. about that. And right. less satisfying sex as well. Like less exactly. Satisfying. He mentioned that. Yeah. He just dropped a comment in the chat. I'm like, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's like, yep. Now, I'm not saying all of a sudden, oh, just go for the one, but stop focusing on the goddamn number. I've, I've tried to boil it down to you need to have enough for you to understand that it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we can speed that process up. And that's something I've been trying to do recently. And I think it's something I want to embrace much more. Like, I think we can, I, I, in the early days of my content and maybe even with my Tinder guide, I do feel like I've sold this magical utopia of like, if you can just get laid as much as possible, that's all that matters. Now I never said that, but I think part of 
removing maybe the glamour of having a high lay count is showing people that there are other things. So you are doing it by pointing out, you know, the gym and, and what you get from that. I've now started talking a lot more about stoicism, mental health, happiness, peace, uh, meditating, all that kind of stuff, relationships, building yourself up in your body, business. I've started talking about that a fair bit. So mm -hmm. I think I won't say the word duty because like we can do whatever the fuck we want. We don't really owe anyone anything, but I've made it my personal mission at least to start moving that direction of showing guys that there is something outside of sex because I do see a couple of guys on my forums right now who are just like, hey, this year I fucked like 27 girls, this girl, this girl, this girl, this girl, this girl. And it's like, yeah, but last year you fucked 27 girls as well. So like, is this all you did this year? And I'm, you know, it's not up to me to say like, is that all you've done? But I do sort of gently push them and say like, is it time to work on business now? Is it yeah. time to make some friends? Like, is there something else outside of just getting laid? Because the sex will keep coming. Because like, you've got that a keep lot. Getting... Yeah. yeah. You, you know what to do to get it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the point that a nap sounds more interesting than a date. Yeah, yeah. Know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. that point where it's like, yeah, I could go out, but I could go to bed early as well. I could catch up on my sleep and then work on my business tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. could play video games. I've been there a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm 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 having that a lot lately. It's like, oh, it's a good place to be, in all honesty, because like you're mm -hmm. not. No more sleepless nights, as in, oh shit, I just no got more. a match at eleven p.m. It's like, oh fuck. Yeah. Now it's just like, yeah, you know what? I can miss this one. Yep. yep Sleep. Yep. That's abundance Good. mentality, right? Oh, yeah. It is a great place yep. to be. Took me more than I wish it did. Kind me of. too. Me too. Do you feel like that's because... So for me personally, I feel like... And that's, that's why I said, you know, my mission is to sort of show people that there is something else outside of sex. Sex is fucking wonderful. Let's make that goddamn clear. But for me personally, I wish more people had pointed that out to me. Because a lot of what pe what the people that I followed, it was all about sex. It was like intersexual dynamics. It was it was here's how you get laid. Here's how you get pussy. Here's how you do this. And yeah, like 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 what put you in that position? I guess is my question. Of like like why did it take so long for you? Do you think to realize that <sighs> sex wasn't everything? The opportunity is one. Mm -hmm. Where it's like some girls, I just really wanted to or it's like oh no i am i am not skipping this mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like no there was also um a friendly wager between mates who could get to x number before x age mm -hmm. that was there and this proving yourself to towards oneself as well yeah where it's like, oh, I, I want to be able to be able to say X or Y. Mm -hmm. Like, I can average out on this. Mm -hmm. And it did get, like, a lot. The focus on it became a lot less and less and less and less after certain things. And then you start, you're trying to think, um, trying to remember certain names and then you just see what pile of nameless faces it really is. It's like a, yeah. it's a weird concept, but like the the nameless because pile of faces. You weren't, yeah, I had the same thing. It's like you weren't screening or you weren't vetting. You were just going, as long as she's attractive, that's all that matters. And I think that's fine at the start. But yeah, at some point you do well, have like a, you want some greater reason that you're sleeping with each girl. Well, not only that, but like say whatever you want. It would be nice if you could actually get a second date instead of being the guy they just wanted to have fucked once because you have abs. Yeah, I That was I a went into big that. part of it as well. I went into that same phase um, a couple of years ago. So did a couple of my close friends actually, where we all said like, you know what? This is going to sound weird, but I think I don't want to get laid on the first date. I think I want to make women wait until date two or three before I let them have my dick. And like, that was a game changer because it's like, yeah, now I'm finding the girl... It's 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 why I've never really held it against the women who say no. I'm you're gonna have to wait for it. It's like, yeah, for that fucking makes sense. Yeah, I've come full circle now. I'm in the same position where I say you got to wait for it. And if you're not willing to wait for it, that's perfectly fine. But I'm uh, not gonna fuck you. Man. You got to earn this penis. Well, I'm not there because like, um, 
I'm doing it differently right now. Or it's like, look, I know you want to shag me. Like that's mm -hmm. stating the obvious. <laughs> Very humble brag here. But it's like, yeah, I know that's on the table. Mm -hmm. But what else? Like, are you somebody who I want to text after it happens? Like, I'll I'll have sex yeah. on the first date. It's kind of like, well, I wouldn't want somebody who wouldn't want to fuck me, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it is an attraction thing. It just is an attraction thing. I don't want to. I don't want to have to convince somebody to sleep with me, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't know she wants to shag me within five seconds of seeing me, never mind. But then it's like, okay, sure, I understand. Like likewise, but what else? Because if you're not somebody who I would want to text after this, it's like I can stay home, be done with this way quicker than putting the amount of time in. So that's where the point where I'm at. One thing but you it, can do that. I, hmm? Sorry, you finish. You, you finish. Well, it, it's strange that we are now at the point of 21 year old chicks. So it's like, yeah, oh, so come this women. is what it feels like. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ironic. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's when the empathy starts kicking in and you're like, holy crap. Like, I can't believe that I thought women shouldn't make guys wait. I can't believe that I thought like women should just give it up while sim while simultaneously saying that she's a slut if she does. But like, yeah, you, you do sort of come full circle. And that's where a lot of the red pill like ideas sort of transform into something that's a little less blunt and clumsy. Well, something it, that's it, a little more nuanced. Well, exactly. But it's, it's kind of typical, right? Because even in fitness, like you become the guy who needs to go six times a week. And mm -hmm. count my macros and blah 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 and then you finally you swing back to the middle yeah swing back to the middle yeah same as the, 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 like with dating like no you swing far off the red pill like the the anger phase and the um comeuppance phase where i'm like mm -hmm. i'm gonna shag all these women and never text them back blah 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 and then you come back to the middle where it's like whoa chill down mm -hmm. there mate. like calm down you don't because i don't know about you but there are some chicks who were just into me and they were very, like, they were great girls. But I didn't go for it because, no, I don't want to settle yet. It's like, dude, you yeah. fucking moron. Like, dude, I look yeah, back I on had... some of those chicks where it's like, oh, that's a one, missed opportunity. One fun thing my, okay, so this is like amazing timing. One fun thing my girlfriend, Emmy and I, you know, do sometimes, we, we think back on, you know, the women that we slept with and, that I did let go because I was like, no, I'm on, still on the up and up. Like, you know, yeah, this girl is great, but there's a better girl out there. And you'd keep like stepping up and trying to upgrade. And yeah, you look back and you're like, damn, some of those girls were like fucking amazing though. But I was just like, I was trying to find the next level. And anyway, long story short, there was this girl that we saw like maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago that, you know, Emmy decided I'm, I'm into her. She's like really attractive and stuff, but like, I don't think she's as attractive as some of the other women that we could sleep with. And I argued with her like for crazy. I was like, are you fucking here? She's like fucking hot as hell. She's like a fucking, she's really hot. Like, what are you talking about? And we eventually decided, okay, fine. Like there's no point having a threesome with someone if you're not into them. So we slept with her once and sent her a nice text and said, Hey, we're not going to do it again. As, as the years have gone by and we've been looking for more and, and you know, We've thought, I, I've talked about that particular girl and some other girls, but that particular girl multiple times. We matched with her on Hinge a week ago again, and we sent her a long text and saying, like, hey, how's your life been? She's like, oh, I've been doing all this shit, doing all this. And you know, we both said we were in a weird phase back then, but do you want to grab a fucking drink? And she's like, hell yeah, I'd love to. You guys were great. So it's this weird sort of like it's come full fucking circle. So I don't know how that'll go yet. We'll see, but. Well, yeah. I'm hoping the best for you. The, the universe works in mysterious ways. Like I'm not religious at all or whatever, but I, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, you know what? There is a universe out there and it's, it's on my it's, side. <laughs> it's on it's our side. It's doing its own. Yeah. It's doing its own shit. And whether you're, you know, religious or you believe in woo woo or you think all of that is like fucking retarded. You have to admit when you look outside, there's a whole bunch of shit and a whole bunch of variables and a whole bunch of stuff that you have no control over. A lot of stuff that's happening out there. And, I, it's in, it's in the book that I recommended earlier, the Byron Katie book. I need your love. Is that true? She says for people that say the world or the universe is very cold or, you know, I don't get what I want. The world isn't fair. Life isn't fair. How many times do you hear people say life isn't fair? She says, that's an awful fucking story for you to tell yourself. But if you actually sit there and think about it, the entire universe is on your side. 
The entire universe wants you to win. The entire universe is supporting you. The evidence of that is right now you're sitting in a chair that some that a bunch of people built for you. So there's like several hundred people that built a chair that supports you. Someone or a bunch of people are keeping the electricity on right now. There's hundreds of people doing that for you. There is an entire network of trucks and transport to bring you food to your supermarket so that you can eat and be comfortable. There is like when you actually start breaking it down, there's like potentially a million people that are all like having some butterfly effect on your life to keep you supported and happy and healthy. And when you realize that, and I guess you could say gratitude, when you're grateful for that, it's like, wow, maybe the whole fucking universe does want me to win. Like... You know what I mean? There's just like so much in your. I, I know what you mean. I love those memes where it's like, this is the universe. And here you are worrying about cow farts infecting the environment or shit like that. Yeah. It's like, eh, yeah. we, yeah. and oh, man, this is something. Two more things I really want to get into with you. If you have the time, if you have the time. Good. And it's kind of about like, what does financial freedom mean for you? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know what? Let's do that one first. And I think I can segue that into like the last topic. So what does financial freedom mean for you, Andy? Okay. A lot of people are going to tell you that financial freedom means having enough money to pay your bills and then excess, like to some amount excess of that, or maybe having some amount of savings. I don't think that that's financial freedom. I right now have significantly more debt than I have in terms of like money and income. Mm. And Yet I feel more financially free than I ever have in my entire life because I've been able to let go of a lot of the stories I had around money. I had a lot of stories of like, I'm never going to have enough money. I'm always going to be poor. I'm never going to be rich. You know, even if I get rich, then I'll have even more expenses that I'll want to, you know, be paying more taxes. Like I had a lot of those sort of stories and I did a lot of like meditating and, and stoic work. And, you know, if you want books that really help another Byron Katie book, is called Loving What Is, which is a book on stoicism. And she's got some stuff on money in there. And I, I did a lot of work on my ideas and my stories around money and my nervousness and my fears and my stress. And I ultimately came to realize something that, you know, Byron Katie talks about and a lot of other people talk about. You always have exactly the right amount of money as to, like you always have the exact amount of money that you need. And that seems like a woo-woo concept. But when I actually investigated that and thought it through, I thought about how I've built my business over the last four years, my, my coaching. And there have been so many times where I was so stressed that I wouldn't be able to pay the bills. Like I was literally unable to sleep. I was like, I'm going to be fucking homeless this month. And I would do some bit of content or I would be honest with my audience and say, guys, I'm fucking stressed. I don't know if I can pay my bills. And every single fucking time someone would sign up for coaching. Or they would, I had people literally just send me money. They're like, bro, I don't want you to be homeless because then you can't do all the free content I'm enjoying. Here's $500. I had someone send me $1,000 because they're like, here's a thousand US dollars. I don't want you to not pay your bills. And so I, I realized every single time, and this isn't just like a woo woo concept or something. If you stop and think, everybody listening, if you were in a position where it's like, I need $500 by tomorrow or the mafia is going to break my fucking legs and kill my family you would find $500. Now you might say, how would I find $500? You wouldn't have a fucking choice. It wouldn't fucking matter. You would go on the streets and you would ask every single person, yo, the mafia is going to break my fucking legs. Can I have money? I had a friend who did this sort of, you know, example, like a perfect example of this, where he started the day, he slept in a park overnight. Oh damn. And he didn't have his, he didn't have his phone with him. He didn't have his wallet. He didn't have anything, nothing, just the clothes on his back and his shoes. And he said, I'm going to prove to all of you who say, I can't start a business or I can't make money or I'm stuck in my shitty job. I'm going to prove that's fucking bullshit. And so he walked around, basically just walking around door knocking. He ended up knocking on, I think like 120 houses and just saying, yo, can I clean your gutters for you? Or can I clean your driveway? Or can I like do some gardening work? And he said, I don't have any equipment. I don't even have a phone. I don't have a video, like, like, I don't, sorry, I don't have my phone or my wallet, but can I do some work for you? And a bunch of people said, no, obviously a bunch of people said, yeah, sure. You can clean my gutters. And I think he ended the day with like 600 us dollars because he just fucking went out there and actually tried. I like the concept. So, the, the point is if you had a gun to your head and you were really needing money, you would find the fucking money. 30 so or really 21. I, yeah. And so it's, 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 it's not even so much like 
that I'm saying, believe in the universe and the universe is woo woo and it will give you what you need. It's like, no, if you don't believe in that kind of concept, and by the way, I do believe in that, but if you mm -hmm. don't, and I believe in that through like the evidence that I found for that. So don't mm -hmm. just believe me because I say that, that'd be fucking stupid. But if you don't believe in that, believe in yourself. For fuck's sakes, believe in yourself and your survival instinct, which will kick, believe in your fucking biology. We're talking about the red pill here. Trust in your fucking evolutionary psychology that if you need money, because it's literally life or death, you will find money. Homeless people don't fucking die outside. They say, can I please have some money or I will fucking die. And you go, okay, sure, here's some money. So yeah, that's long winded fucking way of saying I found financial freedom by funnily enough, just trusting that whatever money I need, I will find a way to make it. Trusting in myself that I can brainstorm and come up with different ways. I could cut some expenses. I could ask family and friends for money. I could offer some extra services. I could go and house door knock and clean people's fucking houses. Like mm -hmm. there will always be a way to make money when you need it. And so I think that is much more stable financial freedom rather than saying, let me earn a certain amount of money. Cause what do you do when you don't earn that money? You have no more fucking financial freedom. You feel hopeless and a victim and fuck my boss fired me. I'm fucked. It's, it's, it's shaky ground. I'd rather the financial freedom that's like actually stoic and will always last and is based on knowledge. And yeah, G, G Newman wrote in the chat, by the way, some people would just sink down in despair and give up with the gun to their head. Yeah. Not you though. You, you guys wouldn't be watching this if you were those like, well, exactly. And that like, the law of attraction has value to it, but not because of the reason some people say it is. It's like, oh, you, you believe things into existence. No, that's not it. It, it has to do with your primary focus. Yes. It, the more you focus on the thing, the more you set yourself to it. Yes. Yes. And, and that's you what will take the, the actions that need to be taken. Exactly. Because you focus so much on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had one coaching client of mine who was also doing coaching with some other woman who was like a, a spiritual woo-woo teacher. Mm -hmm. And I mean woo-woo in, in the most loving sense, but she was mm -hmm. like really woo-woo. And he asked me quite a few times where he's like, man, Andy, I really love the way that you focus a lot on taking action and getting shit done. But this, this spiritual woo-woo teacher of mine, she's teaching me about money and everything. And she's teaching me about like law of attraction. And if I just sit there and like think about money, money will come to me. And he goes, you know, Andy, I've been doing this for like about two weeks now and I haven't had a single like paying client of mine. And I was like, well, have you been like telling people that you offer, like he, he was a photographer. I said, have you been telling people that you can do a photo shoot for them? And he was like, well, no, she said not to do that. She said to just sit there and have the law of attraction and will it into existence. And I said like, no, bro, you have to actually still tell people, by the way, I offer photo shoots. You don't sit in your apartment at home where nobody knows you exist and just pray that money will come to you. You have to actually go out there and fucking hustle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like you have to think about money. And the more you think about it, then you have to think about how to acquire it, which yeah. is something I really disdain, like with a, with a, a real focus on the disdain part about the manosphere. It's this, mm -hmm. this strange conviction of you need to have six figs. Otherwise women won't find you attractive. It's like, yeah. Uh, you need to be a billionaire, whatever, for women to even notice you. And it's like, motherfucker. I don't know about you, Andy, but I don't flex my wealth. No, uh, the wealth I have. Apologies. Let me rephrase that. I don't flex the wealth I have, no matter what that amount is. And I'm doing just fine. I don't have expensive watches. I don't even own a car. <laughs> I do house hacking. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Yet, for I don't some think they reason... actually believe that, though. I think they just say that as an excuse not to try. They say, you need a million dollars, otherwise no woman will give you the time of day. Well, oh, isn't that convenient? I don't have to try because like, oh. I don't have a million dollars. But even with financial freedom and in the way I see it, you don't even need a million to have that. Like, no, financial a freedom... Like a lot of fucking money. <laughs> It is a shit ton of money. It really is. Like, I'm a big proponent of, like, minimalism and things like that. Don't live below above your means. You Don't spend... You, you mm -hmm. would love my um, apartment and my girlfriend would dislike you. She wouldn't uh -oh. dislike you, but my, my apartment is so fucking minimalistic. And, like, yeah, she's always like, Do you sure you don't want some plants or something? I'm like, no, nope, there needs to be nothing in my fucking living room but one couch. And that's enough. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I haven't gone that far. I, I removed a shit ton of stuff. I did like a couple of books I really wanted to keep. And now that everything is more going well with the business and shit like that, I've gotten more into certain hobbies that I really like. But in general, like when it comes to clothing and shit like that, it's like I can only wear one shirt at a time. And they uh, get in the way. If you have too many things in your fucking wardrobe, you yeah. can't see the ones you want to wear. Yeah, you, you need like four main shirts, maybe five, and then you're good. Yeah, well, exactly. And it's like, no, you need brand clothing and things like that. It's like, do you even know how many girls just go to Primark? Like, it's like, guys, <laughs> really? <laughs> these these weird things to focus on when it comes to like finances, not even knowing that financial freedom is a way lower number than what mm -hmm. they think it is. And see, like, I would and, go even further and say like it's a mindset as well. And you're basically financial, saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Financial freedom is a mindset. Like to me, it, is, it has always been the removal of the must of the nine to five. Yes, 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 yeah. If I am able to remove that with, without severe consequences, like I don't, I don't have debt, things like that, I'm really not a big fan of debt. Mm -hmm. So that all the money that comes in, I do not have to spend on something other than food and housing and things like that. You're financially free. You have eliminated the biggest stressor in life. Mm -hmm. And the thing that determines the amount you need to get every week or month or day depends on your virtues and values. Like, where are those? Because that will determine how expensive your life is going to get. So maybe a bit of a open description of financial freedom. It mostly all depends on the individual. Like, I can do with the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. But that also means that I don't have to get the maximum financial income stream that some might need and then slave away their lives 40 to 60 hours a week at a job they hate. I think even that is like, I think you could even zoom out a little bit of that and say everything you're saying is still a mindset though. It's like, it's the same thing as when we say, does the lay count matter? And it's like, no, 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 it matters if you know that you can get laid or if you're happy with what you've done. I think the same with with um, money. And so what I'm trying to say here is I completely agree when you say removing that need for the nine to five, like that's your financial freedom. But we can rephrase that as knowing that you don't need to work a nine to five is the same thing as saying, I know that I can earn money. I know that I can always go out and earn more money. I know that I have the skills or the knowledge or I'll fucking figure it out and Google it. Or it's, it's that knowledge that I could earn money anytime I need to. And there might be some challenges and hurdles and all that. It's that fucking abundance mindset of knowing yeah, it, that money is essentially infinite and I just have to go out there and actually hustle for it. And as hard as I hustle, I will earn more. If I want to hustle less, I'll learn less. If I, if I want tons of money, I just have to hustle a lot. The same thing you learn with sex. If I bust my ass, I could fuck five women this week. I could fuck five women today if I work 10 times harder than that. If I work 10 times harder than that, maybe I could have an orgy right this second. Like, you know that there's levels to this and it, it depends on your hard work. And I think just realizing that, that's the fucking financial freedom. Because Jack, dude, most people don't know that. They don't know that if they worked harder, they could earn more money because they're stuck in a wage or a, a salary job where it's like extra work doesn't get you more money. Well, not only that, spending less will require you to not need as much money. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't yes. need to work as hard at a job you hate. Yeah, but that's just because I think that they're sold into this position. They're sold into this prison of like the exact dollar amount that they're given. What I mean by that is, let's say they have a job and they earn sixty thousand dollars a year. The the spending will rise up to meet that because they don't like the job. Let's, let's be honest, most people don't like their job. Plenty do, but lots don't like their job. And so the spending rises up to account for the fact that you don't like it. You have to sort of self-medicate. You have to go, well, I'm working this job and I don't really like it that much. Or it's, it's okay, but like I'd probably rather be running my own business or something that gives me freedom. 
I, I'd rather at least choose when I fucking get to work and my boss doesn't let me do that. So I am to some degree a slave. So I better fucking get some spoils for all this effort. I better get my flat screen TV or I, I deserve a nice car or you know what? I deserve to have some beers and some nice dinner. And not that there's anything wrong with those things, but my point is that the, the, the level of spending rises up to meet that. So if you're earning $150,000, you'll spend $150,000 or $130,000 worth of, of, of shit that, you know, maybe you need it, maybe you don't, but it does just keep climbing up. And so I think financial freedom is sort of understanding that relationship and breaking free of that and going, I'll spend whatever I want to spend. And therefore I'll learn as much money as I need to, to hit that lifestyle that I'm trying to live. A detachment from wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Not being a slave to it. Cause I think a lot of people yeah. are like, That's a good way and I certainly it. was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Same here. I mean, we all grow up with it. Like you need a job, you need this, you need that. But like even what kind of job it's so weird. Like, now that like I have the online business that's going well, I find myself to still go back for shifts at like entry level jobs mm -hmm. just to do something. And also a bit of a fail safe, like what if the, the business fails? I can at least put on my resume that I kept working and blah, 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 shit like that. But these entry level jobs, I, a while back, I was in a warehouse doing order, picking, hey, you know, driving I around. Fucking... I, I worked in it. a warehouse too. Yeah. I freaking loved it. Like, so you're saying that I can drive around this warehouse the entire day and you're not going to bother me as long as I like pick up what you require. Mm -hmm. Yep. And people gave shit to people when I was younger for this. Like you are not educated and blah, blah, blah. Dude. Yep. yep. $60,000 found... in debt for like a degree. No, thanks. I'd I found some of the around. most, mate, I found some of the most enlightened people when i worked at a warehouse yeah i was like these people are just they show up every day they're fucking happy they they have some peace in their work they seem to really enjoy what they're doing they're grateful to the bosses and the bosses seem really grateful to them and yeah i had the same thing i was like what well, these people are a lot more intelligent i thought i was just going to get with like redneck hicks for want of a better word you know mm -hmm. the australian equivalent of that but yeah i, I think there's a lot of freedom in realizing because even some of those people are breaking at least the warehouse that i worked at they got to choose when they worked and they were just paid per hour. So they could have a three hour day if they wanted to. And you were literally allowed to leave the second you wanted to. You could just oh, say, hey boss, I'm done for the day. Yeah, sure, see ya. As long as the work eventually got done by everybody collectively, you could work as much or as little as you wanted. And they seemed fucking free. And they don't hold value to their position kind of thing, where it's like, that's not what life's yeah. about. Like the, the, yeah. uh, and I, I don't like doing this, but like to kind of shit on feminists, and this is what I meant with why I respect like the mom of those children, where they they take their value so much from their position while they're not even happy with it. Like they're not happy spending so much time at work. They're not ha their degree won't keep their war them warm at night. Yeah, they build it up so much and things like that, where it's like, well, you're just a factory worker. Yeah, but at least I'm happy. I think that's just like. And again, this is like the seventh time I've plugged this book. It's a, it's a really fucking good book. I put I it need in your the love. Track. Is that true? Yeah. She, in the book, she talks a lot about that, about a lot of people are basically checking boxes that they think society will approve of literally just so that they can get a, like the validation or more to the point so that people won't think less of them. And so that can be, you know, the current zeitgeist is like, as a woman, you should be working and your kids should be in daycare and like, heaven forbid you look after them at home as a mother like no fuck that no that's beneath you you should be working your career and someone else can look after your kid the state can look after your kids what a great fucking notion that is but it, that's just the current like zeitgeist and so a lot of people will do that because they don't want to be the weird freak a lot of people don't want to homeschool their kids for the same reason or i'll be thought less of i'll be the freak like oh don't get me started on conspiracy theories <laughs> it's not even a conspiracy th are you reading something no i know chat? Hmm? what was the conspiracy theory you lost me oh no 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 like uh what you're getting into like the zeitgeist and things like that and these days like i get into certain things where i'm like i'll oh, give it three months turns out to be right it's like oh shit mm -hmm. here we go here we go like oh meat-based diet is unhealthy it's like mm -hmm. yeah 
Like it starts at the little things. Like this is the beauty about the whole red pill stuff. It's like, oh, what else did they lie about? And then just you can, you can new... see, yeah, you see behind the veil for sure. There's that joke, like, what's the, what's the difference between a conspiracy and reality? Six, Six months. months. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole flu epidemic of the last two years showed that. Oh yeah, don't don't get. No, me. I know you. Yeah, you're from Australia. You got it worse. Holy you should like, are, in are fucking you allowed? <laughs> the one thing I'm one thing I'm very fucking proud of is in April of 2020 I did a shitload of research and I posted on a fucking forum and I have a screenshot of it and everything and I was like guys I don't think this thing is as scary as everything is making it out to be I was literally called a grandmother killer before anyone else even used the term grandma killer like you're killing grandma mm -hmm. and I was like I was like this is very irrational but I I, just, I I had spreadsheets I had graphs I had everything and I was like I understand that people want to stay safe and you know I'm fine with like looking after old people but like why do I have to stay inside like here, here's all the statistics and yeah that was my first like peering behind the veil of like when people are consumed by an ideology or by a certain like zeitgeist or like like an idea that rational thought can kind of leave the room and it's it's just I don't want to lose approval so I'm gonna do what everyone else is doing so i think that's yeah. kind of like a hijacking of part of our psychology and maybe that's what feminists are doing when they get a job they're like i don't want to be disapproved of i don't even want the job I fucking hate it i miss mm -hmm. my kid and every time i leave them in the morning it feels like fucking sheer agony for them and for me but i'm going to ignore that biology that part of my biology i think you know on another note that's something i think the red pill does a decent job of they say like yo biology exists evolution yep. exists like let's like actually listen to some of that shit hey maybe it's there for a reason maybe men want to get laid for a reason and we shouldn't just shut that down maybe women want to look after their kids for a reason and we don't just shut that down exactly i think that's a good way to end it real quick yes or no just to confirm something. no the cool oh good one <laughs> yeah well, Man, well, this well, has well, been well. great this has been great i'm not gonna lie yeah, i, I had a shit this. ton of fun Quickest way to get a threesome is have a stable main plate who helps you get a second girl. No, I don't think that's the quickest way at all. No, really? No, oh. no that's that's the most fun way. The quickest way would be to be seeing two girls at once who happen to both be up for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's always okay. the quickest. So, so if you want, you know, I I wrote a fucking threesome guide. It's paid, yep. so I'll add that caveat in there. But if you want the three the free version of it. You essentially, with every girl that you sleep with, you say this, and this is how you phrase it. You don't have to phrase it perfectly like this, but you know, you essentially say, have you ever fooled around with another girl or thought about it? And when you have two girls that say yes to that question, yes, I've done it before, or yes, I've thought about it. You show them each other's pictures. You say, hey, do you want to grab a bottle of wine or a drink or something at my place? You know, you meet, have some drinks, and then you just say to both of them, yo, you two should kiss. And then when they kiss, boom, threesome. So that's the quickest and easiest way. Having a main plate or a main girl that finds other girls for you, like which is what you know my girlfriend does. No, that's that's not easy because you almost have to train her. There's a whole process of training her with that shit because suddenly she has to realize, wow, the dating market is kind of hard for men. And as a as a bisexual or a lesbian woman, you are basically a man in the dating market. You get rejected just as much. And yeah, my girlfriend like fucking fell apart when that first started. She's I like remember, crying and she. I yeah. remember my ex doing it. Like I'm trying to find one, but why is this so hard? They're flaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, oh my. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that 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 moment of clarity, right, where they go like, "Wait, is this what men deal with?" And you're like, "Hey, bingo, boom. Yep. Welcome to everything. Now you We've got understand. That. Yeah." Now you actually understand. You kind of theoretically <laughs> understood before, but now you actually fucking feel it. Yeah, yeah. That was that was life changing for every girl that I've ever got to do that. They're always like, "Holy mm. shit, I think I'm going to be much nicer to men now." And I'm like, "Thank you." Yes, now you understand. Like they're so yeah. flaky and they don't know what they want, and then they match with you, but they don't say hi and they don't respond. It's like what? And the they hell set are a date. Guys? They set a date and then 10 minutes before or an hour before they say, I'm tired. I'm sorry. And they don't respond. And you know, they, my, they get my hopes up and then they, it's like, yeah, welcome to like the world of fucking dating women. Man, yes. My dog died or whatever. My window broke. I actually had that one. My car window broke. It's like, I'm going. Oh, I've home. had some zingers, bro. I've had some zingers. I've had like, I'm sunburnt and I, I can't come. Oh, so had I had a good, okay. Yeah. I, uh, beat me on this one i had a girl on the date. we were drinking coffee all of a sudden she's like i need to go home I'm like wait what 
She's like, well, I woke up with a kind of a blown up feeling. So I took a laxative, but it didn't kick in before I went here. I look at her. I'm like, go home. She's like, can I get a hug? I'm like, go home. Well, go with you. What, can you get a hug? What the fuck? I'm not going to hug a balloon that's about to burst. What the fuck? I'm not going to hug you fucking human colostomy bag. No. <laughs> what the fuck? Can I get a hug? No. No, go away. It's like we were sitting there with our coffee. She's like, I need to go home because I took a laxative because I had this blown up feeling. I'm like, let's go. No. Go. Let's go. Okay, that might be the best excuse. That's certainly the weirdest. Yeah. That's certainly the weirdest. Is that the weirdest? I'm trying to think. No, okay, no, I got a weirder one. For, no. Oh, let's no, go. That's, no, 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 I can't. Um, I'll tell you after the stream because okay. the guy, yeah, the guy will want okay. to be anonymous with this. Okay, okay. Andy, thank you so much for doing this. Two and a half No, hours. this was fun, man. This was amazing. I'll have to get you on mine. I would love to. I mean, I had a great time. This went beyond my expectations. Guys, Andy's YouTube channel is in the chat. Hit the like, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below your thoughts of this show. And if you want to support the channel, if you be so canned, click, click, sorry, the join button, get access to weekly Q and A's, the exercise performance course for free, and my narration of the book of Pook, also for free by clicking the join button. Andy, any closing words? Buy Jack's coaching because he's really cool. <laughs> I do my best. Andy, thank you so much for being here. Uh, ending, ending the podcast. Tot scenes. Bye.